And my over there is Audrey and Joe Peavy. Hey, you ain't been down to Henry County see our hotel with Big Giant Shoe. You need to come down here. We got basketball and stuff. Hey, guess what? You could buy yourself a nice house for only, it's 17,000 square feet. For only eight dollars. What eighteen thousand miles behind it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. Did you that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's at the beginning of the live video. All right, here we go. Welcome to We Are Libertarians. I'm your host, Chris Spangle. We bring you all of the irreverence modern politics deserves while putting people before political parties. We examine current events from a libertarian perspective with the goal of leaving you better informed. Please be sure to rate and review us on iTunes, like us on Facebook, and become a subscriber on Patreon at WeAreLibertarians.com. Without your financial support, independent media like this cannot exist. In exchange for supporting our program, we give you great bonus content. I like having the music. This show is crowdsourced, so you can send us the news with the hashtag WALnews or in our Facebook group or Discord channel. We're always taking your questions and comments via email at editor at weirdlibertarians.com. Please be sure, bleh, please be warned that this show is raw, unedited, and authentic. So the language is sometimes strong and offensive. In this show, we're going to cover just a bunch of Trump stuff. We're going to have a little fun. Uh, I've got uh, I've got two returning co-hosts. Uh, Chris Galt, how are you? I'm great. I, I don't. Your mic's not on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to fix that. And then uh, Tad Western, Tad, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I've been gunslinging for a while. Try and, now. Uh, free range gunslinging. Uh, you can't hear what, what? I know what's wrong. You can't introduce oh. me before. Hello, Cole. hello. Yeah. I'm here. There he is. He, I'm in. He's hot. Woo. So, well, I, I'm thrown off because here's the little secret about broadcasting: not everything you hear <laughs> in a show is live. Sometimes it's mixed in later, and we never had the actual music. And uh, I got a second iPad so I could play live clips and, and everything right on the, on the iPad while we stream on the other iPad. And then I have the news on my computer. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the second show where we have the music going the first week. I'm completely thrown off by it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm a different, different rhythm. I'm too. so lost. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I apologize. And then Galt's mic wasn't on because we normally don't have anybody in that Rookies. chair. Rookies. Yeah. <laughs> Whew. So Chris Galt's here. How are you, Chris? Oh, I'm great. And then we've got Tad Western. Tad, how are you? I've been better. What's wrong? Been a little sick, and then uh, you know I don't like when I go to restaurants and then they try to slip one over on me. I know. We we just were we were just at the Stack Pickle, and uh, the Stack Pickle is... they they tried serving me raw fried pickles. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> I've never laughed harder in a restaurant. We're sitting there, and we've got these two cute bartenders, and uh, the the Stack Pickle here in Indianapolis is a local chain, the official green room of We Are Libertarians. Absolutely. <laughs> and we're sitting there, and I'm done eating. They were until this podcast. And so I'm playing on my phone trying to win an election, and Tad Western just goes, can I speak to your manager? I got a raw fried pickle. This is unacceptable. And I like look over to see what was wrong because I'm thinking, like, this is serious. Tad never asked for the manager. <laughs> And then the the two girls just you know they're like looking at him going trying to figure out the situation and then he goes <laughs> I don't laugh like that and then, and, then, and then we realized what he was doing it was a pickle spear and and uh, it wasn't fried so I just thought it was the funniest thing I've ever seen I yeah, laughed they, so hard they, they, <laughs> well even before that they. Uh... <laughs> I can't remember what I was gonna say, but yeah, it was a, it was pretty pickle. much a yeah, it was, just yeah. A, it was a raw pickle, and uh, I actually complained that they had cut the pickles up before. Yeah, I said, "What is this?" When they hand me the plate with the fried sliced pickles, I because she said fried pickle for a side, so I assumed it was a full pickle, and I was like, "Well, I have a knife; I can cut it up. I didn't need you to cut them for me. I'm an adult, you know. I can use a knife." Yeah, nary a stacking of those pickles either. Yeah, and I. I so do you, then, when you get they, fried pickles, normally they're a long spear or a full pickle that's fried. Well, they're not usually sliced up and. Well, chipped. I don't listen. If I read on a menu that you have fried pickle, not plural, I assume that it's just a pickle fried. Right. Fried. Oh, you know. Okay. 
So it's portable, lacking, yes. portable fried pickle. You know. Yeah. All right. Well, this. But is, anyway, this is... I mean, it's not. It's not that big of a deal. Everything was wonderful. From a place called the Stacked Pickle. People are losing their minds <laughs> over how entertaining <laughs> I, this is. I, so I tell far. you what. I tell you uh, what. Yeah, I got jury summons this week. You did? Yeah. Did oh. you go? Oh, I I just called in, so I got summons. So oh, you got to go. It starts on the day of my birthday. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Only you would get yeah, summoned on your on birthday. On my birthday. Right. That's my first day. You want to go? <laughs> oh, I'm going to go. Hell yeah. But has it, have you guys get... ever done it before? I've been I've been summoned, but I never actually had to go. Oh, uh, I, I changed my name. I hope I have to go, so but I'm not sure to. yet. He literally did. Your name. Your name's actually Tyler Ch- Weiss. Chad Eastern. <laughs> and uh, he got drunk one night on Facebook. No, I and you got blackout drunk in Broad Ripple, and changed your name to uh, Tad Western on Facebook. <laughs> Woke up the next day and had a different name, and then you couldn't change it for three months, so you rolled with it. These are all lies. I don't. I don't know where the, from the pit of hell. <laughs> Je- <laughs> yeah, Jeff- no, but it sounds. It sounds like a good story. Yeah. What else was there? <laughs> yeah. Make me are we a backstory ga- too. <laughs> are, 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 are we out of gas already? It's only been five minutes. So, so uh, it's been good. We've been going pretty hard. Uh, the 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 statistics today was actually the I looked today and in twenty four hours, we had an episode at thirty five hundred downloads, which is the fastest uh, that we've ever had an episode downloaded. Our average in August. See, when we went to two episodes a week. You know, we were we were around nine thousand a download yeah. per episode, and I was worried about losing that average because that's really good. That t- puts us in like the top five percent of of all podcasts. And when you add a second show, some people jump ship because it's too much content. And fortunately, people seem like they stuck with us. We we dropped down to about forty five hundred to five thousand per show. We're up to about sixty five hundred to seven thousand per episode in downloads. So. That means we're still adding a lot of new people, and uh, the 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 less fluff, more uh, more balls, n- nerd content <laughs> uh, has has seems people seem to really be enjoying it, and uh, I, I I thank you guys. Yeah, more glasses, M- more glasses. <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, because I was worried, you know, when you when you go, everybody's like, "Well, it's super relatable," and I'm like, "Well, <laughs> it's gonna be uh, more." I got bad news for you if you're looking for more, because you brought me on. I don't know why you decided to do that. that, Everybody hates Tad West. That's sort of what I'm saying is uh, just be advised. We're going to talk issues here very, very shortly. Multiple issues. But uh, we're going to be a little more relaxed (laughs) because (laughs) Tad Tad has a lot of issues. Now, listen, boys. I've got plenty. I'm not – listen. Now, first and foremost, Tad. I'm not going to break any of the rules. No, 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 no. One at a time. You cannot have a – you're as bad as your cousin. Because the last time, every time Aaron, see that tape up there, that that duct tape that says shut up? I got it a year ago, and that's the last time Aaron was on. But well, it's for him because he's just, just every time Aaron's on, there's kind of like this lulling <laughs> extra dialogue going on the whole time he's talking to himself. Well, but it's not even him. He's talking on his phone. Uh, I know. Yeah. To, it's to uh, Hannah. But At so least no, you're talking to yourself, right? Yes. <laughs> so, you know, Hannah spelled backwards is still Hannah? <laughs> so everybody Sometimes. talk one at a time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to – so, so yes, good. we're going to we're going to have a show. It's going to be a little more relaxed than we normally do uh, because Tad's here. And uh, <sighs> I'm hoping that next month, actually, Galt, Galt, Creighton, and I will have a reunion month. That'd be great. Because our friend Creighton mm-hmm. got a job in New York City working for a major uh, business news outlet. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> so he's moving to New York City in Boom. February. So I think in the month of January on Thursdays, we're going to reunite the original crew of Galt, Creighton, and myself and do Thursday shows uh, like we used to. So, um, but I want to jump in starting with talking about Patreon. Patreon made a switch today. Patreon is how we fund this show, this is how we fund the news. It costs. Uh, anywhere from four to six hundred dollars per month to run this thing, and uh, just at the base cost between all the different services we use and the news sources that I, you know, like I have to have a subscription to the New York Times, for instance. Uh, so things like that. So all of that costs somewhere between four and six hundred a month. Uh, and I'm very candid and open about our numbers. A lot of podcasts don't want to tell you their numbers outright just because. They're embarrassing, but ours are not embarrassing. We have very good numbers. Some people, Chris Galt, say the best numbers. The best. I would say that. Yeah. <laughs> and we have huge hands. Yeah. And so 
So I always try to, uh, because I really feel like what we are libertarians as a community. Yes, I am at the head of it. Yes, I am dear leader, the president of all libertarians, the uh, unchallenged <laughs> master of the libertarian realm. I am dear leader, but I really feel like we're building an awesome community here for a group of people who don't have a political home. We are libertarians. We believe in uh, all the libertarian principles or we're new to libertarian principles, and we're trying to learn about those. And we're trying to take those libertarian principles and apply them to the news and current events in society. There's no other libertarian show out there that does what we do, where we are regular folks. Uh, I have 15 years of political and media experience, but uh, all, all the rest of our contributors are just regular guys out there who love politics or are involved in politics and, and come on. And I try to interview interesting people. And we have a roundtable discussion as opposed to me interviewing experts. So we do something totally different here at We Are Libertarians than what you'll hear in any other political talk show. And to fund that, we use Patreon. And Patreon made a change today, and it's, it's cost me a couple subscribers. So I love Patreon. So I want to talk about first, I, I don't exactly know what the changes are, but I think starting next month, Patreon subscribers are going to share a part of the cost of the monthly of the monthly fees so we bring in a thousand over a thousand dollars a month on patreon and it cost me around a little over a hundred bucks between processing fees and patreon fees credit card processing two to three percent of every it's like a two to three percent tax on the world because that's just everybody pays those processing fees and then we pay patreon we as a community for we are libertarians as they help do hosting, they help do um, the, the credit card processing, they help get me in touch with the people they, uh, that subscribe for $5, $1, $5, $10, $25, $100 and $100 a month, and uh, help basically run the back end of our subscription program. You donate, you, well, you basically subscribe, not donate, and then we give you bonus content. And you can go in and manage your account, and it's secure, and it's safe, and it's a really cool platform. And we pay, as a community, for that service. And so what Patreon is doing is they're, they're taking the percentage that is paid to Patreon of every transaction and splitting it between the patron and the creator. Now, I'm not crazy about that because I would rather you just say, I'm giving you $10 a month, and then it's always $10 a month for you instead of $12 a month, and then I see 10 or whatever. So they're taking it on the front end. And stuff. Exactly right. But it's what we always say as libertarians, if it took you right out of your paycheck, you'd never notice, and if you had to write a check, then that's kind of what's happening here. So you're seeing the cost of Patreon in your monthly donations as opposed to me just eating that cost, um, which – I'm fine either way. If if somebody really has a problem with that, then on an individual level, I'm, I'll be happy to to work out another you know system with you. I'm looking into Bitcoin because I hear this Bitcoin thing starting to take off, so I might get interested in that a little bit. You want to know why, right? Why? Because Trump, the globalist, Trump. <laughs> you waited Trump's way got the too long out. to get interested in Bitcoin. <laughs> well, well, yeah, which we'll talk about. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, just so you know, just a heads up to all of our Patreon subscribers. If you aren't a Patreon subscriber, go to wearelibertarians.com. See what we offer you in the different tiers. Right now, we're live streaming to a private Facebook group that has become a really fun community of listeners that get to watch the show live as, as it's happening. I can see the comments, for the most part, popping up. Uh, you get the show commercial-free, CD quality, unedited the night before. Uh, you get bonus content. We give you all kinds of cool stuff when you become a Patreon subscriber. And it helps fund this. And if you look at our YouTube, you see the beautiful studio that we've built. Um, it's gorgeous. It, and, and it helps fund the community that we are building. So I hope you all, if you're a Patreon subscriber, feel that it's worth it. Uh, I wanted to give you an insight into what Patreon is and what you're paying for, what I'm paying for. And uh, just let you know that it's worth it. I've looked into a lot of different options, and Patreon by far really helps. I just don't have time to go build a private system of membership. Like, and I don't have the skill. So Patreon's doing that for us, and they should be paid for it. That's capitalism. So uh, if, if you become a Patreon subscriber at the $10 level, that's kind of what that is. So just a heads up, and I want to thank uh, all the people that subscribe on Patreon, especially... 
um, and I want to make sure that I get his name right. But uh, especially our, f- we have now four people who donate friends who who now subscribe at the one hundred dollar level. They are Christy Avery, Craig DaCosta, Jason Doolittle, and now Brandon Luke. So, Brandon, thank you so much for becoming a $100 subscriber today. Thank you, Brandon. Yes. So he, he gets access to a private chat with myself called Dear Leaders Chambers. Um, There's a lot of guy on cat stuff going a on. Lot in of, that. A lot of cat material yeah, in there. So if you guys are into that. So thank you so much to everybody that makes this, that not just this podcast, but the entire operation that we're trying to build uh, and the, the community that we're building and the tools that we all use and, and, you know, everything from Discord. If you love Discord chat, please join. It's very, very fun. I have to give a shout out because if Harry, if I don't, Harry's, <laughs> Harry's watching shout controlling. Harry. Harry's a good man. Um, yeah. One more non-political thing. I want to give a shout out to everybody who voted in the Lions of Liberty Forum, which yes. is a Facebook group. We are libertarians. Our, our friends over at Lions of Liberty do this Liberty Draft every year where they draft like the top libertarians for something and you know we have the league of liberty group and it's me mark from lions of liberty roger paxton of lava flow and johnny adams from johnny rocket launchpad and you know we have we just kind of help each other grow and do some knowledge sharing and say hey what are you hearing with this and just and kind of intermingle our audiences and communities so we can help each other grow as independent libertarian podcasters and I was the only one left off with the Liberty Draft. And you know how I am, Chris Galt. Oh, it's personal. Petty. Everything's personal. Petty. <laughs> and so I had to teach Mark a lesson. And so I went in and I found TBD, the last place team. <laughs> and I started pushing people towards, our, towards this poll. And TBD eventually became first place. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're a common name in the libertarian household right now. Yep. And <laughs> then... I, I talked to Mark, and I was like, you know what? Heal. I'm going to turn heel and about face. And then we joined Mark, joined forces with Mark. And it was tough. There's a lot of backroom deal making. Oh, yeah. You but can't just uh, jump ship after you. Yeah, well, yes, I can. After you fluff TBD up. TBD was out of luck. And uh, they didn't have anything to offer. And Liberty S. Pumpkins uh, won because of the We Are Libertarians community. And I thank you so much. I wanna... Is that why you wanted my phone? Yes. Uh, I want to. I want to okay. thank everybody who accepted my deals, who, who uh, used their sock accounts to vote. I want to thank everyone who helped me fix this vote, and and so we won. And then that's all that matters, Chris. There's one king lion. There's one king one. lion in the land of liberty. You don't leave advantage. him out. Yes, James Neese. They'll never do it. Again. But it was an instructive lesson <laughs> in something that uh, yeah, I had to bargain with Mark. I said, listen, you free James Neese, you unblock him from your group. And uh, I will support you. And he did. He's yet to deliver on that promise. Oh. But it's not his fault because he can't unban him because one of the other admins permanently banned James from Lions of Liberty Forum. Oh, <laughs> so, wow. Uh, James went in and just scorched earth, but uh, He's as he do does. The same thing so, and Roger Paxton is being a sore loser and saying that his team won. And he didn't. He didn't win. And Can't Roger, win. here's the problem with... Don't be like Hillary. You here, didn't win. Here's the problem with <laughs> anarcho-capitalists. Galt, you've been around a long time, and you know what anarchists are like. The anarcho-capitalists, uh, he went in his group and it was like, Chris Spangle's not an actual libertarian. Oh. He's, not a, he's a phony libertarian. We need to defeat him because he's not pure like us. Can you believe that? Wow. It's just typical. Like that's, And what that does is that if you have that attitude of that person's not a real libertarian... It just, it backfires on you. That's a divide and conquer. Yeah, because yeah. what what happens is the person who isn't pure yet, who just joined the libertarian movement in the last year, goes, well, I don't agree with you. I agree more with the guy you're saying isn't a libertarian. So I guess I'm not a libertarian. Right, like that Bill Weld makes sense to me. <laughs> Am I not a libertarian? I guess I'll go back to the GOP. You know how many people told me if Bill Weld was on the front of that ticket, right. they might have had his vote? right. And now you're everybody's saying that he's not a libertarian, right? And so that doesn't he, help us grow. So in this That's the opposite in this fake election, there's two lessons. First, you have to make a choice in elections. Mm-hmm. Do you want to win, or do you want to be pure? Well, I had to cut a deal with Bittner. <laughs> oh, so we did. know where he he's did. at. Then. He did. I was in oh, the room. Wow. I, I horse traded a little I bit. I was Greg Papanopoulos. I had to horse trade for Bittner's vote, but I got his vote. 
He did. And with his vote, we won the election. You even had to play with me, too. Yep. <laughs> but we got it. I had to, I had to ban you again. I was like, <laughs> how many times do I have to fire you, Chris Galt, before you get it that I'm the boss? Yep, you are. So, so that's that. If you're going to run in elections and you're going to be a candidate, you may have to sometimes make deals and compromise with people that you don't like, like Brett Bittner. So, if you want to be involved in the game of politics, are you willing to make that sacrifice? No. You can sit at home and you can read Ayn Rand and Murray Rothbard and be pure. But if you go out and start playing in politics, you're going to get a little dirty. Yeah. Once you walk out that door. You got to realize that's all fiction. Yeah. You got to come into the real world. You don't know. You may have to cut a deal with Bittner. It's all theories till you get hit in the face. You're just kind of leaning back. I know. I want to stay back. I want to be kind of like (laughs) ambiance. So, so yeah. Are you trying to get me to go wild? Second is that, uh, that you, you, if you're a libertarian, you have to accept that. Libertarians of every stripe exist. It's true. It's like the zebra gum. Right. And so one of the things about we are libertarians is that I believe in the efforts of every libertarian. Okay. So if we're if if we're talking about pure political philosophy, politics doesn't exist. My my uh, there's seven principles that David Bowes came up with in a book called The Libertarian Mind that outline exactly what libertarianism is about. And I will look those up right now. <laughs> and uh, they they're not found in the United States government. <laughs> they're not yeah. they're not popular in modern politics. So you you have to accept that if you're going to be in politics, you're going to yeah. There's some sort of government you're already accepting if you're running as a libertarian candidate under this system. Exactly I mean, right. Come on, you gotta you gotta live in reality. There's a philo- I was thinking about this today actually when I was in the shower, where I th- do all my deep thinking. <laughs> There's a philosophical point where libertarianism is at its purest, which I would argue is pretty much Ancapistan, you know, no mm-hmm. government, nothing, just free trade, do what you want, which is probably morally the, the if you're going to go on the moral scale, that's probably the, the, the An- peak. Ancapistan is peak right. morality. It's peak Woo. morality, yeah. I'm going to put that one in a meme. Yeah. Peak I morality mean, right here. Listen, there's nothing wrong with tackle, <laughs> tactical McNukes, right? But you have to apply that to the system you're living in. It's one thing if you want to run and then change the system, which I'm completely for, but you can't just sit here and say, oh, so-and-so is not libertarian because they actually believe in borders. Okay. I mean, yeah, when it, in, in theory, you, you wouldn't want any borders, but right, you're not dealing with a one-state solution. Even if you were the president or whatever, if you somehow – got rid of borders, you'd still have other countries who would bar entry from your Ancapistan. Right. I mean, it's not, there's kind of some, there's, there's rules to life. I mean, we've got, we've got a highway. I mean, we, there might be some lines painted on that highway that you can, you know, kind of not pay attention to. It doesn't mean you're a bad person, but once you get off the road, you're fucked, you know? Right. So here, this is from David. That makes any sense. David Bowes, Jan 1, Probably 1999. Doesn't. Uh, but all ANCAPs, they drive Jeeps, so they can just go off. <laughs> it's called key concept of, key concepts of libertarianism. And the, the principles are as follows. Individualism, individual rights, spontaneous order, the rule of law, limited government, free markets, the virtue of production, natural harmony of interests, and peace. And like those, and I will post this in the show notes so you can see these and read more uh, closely in them. But like these are the principles of what what libertarians believe, right? And peace, not much peace in the United States government. Natural harmony of interest, well, the government is always interfering in the relationship between two people and the virtue of production. The government is always making new regulations, free markets, NAFTA, the National Free Trade uh, Agreement. Like, there's nothing free trade about NAFTA, for instance. Limited government, ha, the rule of law, no, no, not, not currently here, spontaneous order, Individual rights, individualism. I, I would argue we we even in the libertarian movement have lost sight of individualism, and uh, that's kind of Absolutely. what we'll talk about tonight. But I so these are the principles that I hold, and if I want to do political analysis and talk about modern politics, uh, what I talk about is not necessarily going to be quote unquote libertarian because libertarians 
with the exception of you know Rand Paul, who is uh, called by the anarcho. He's a statist, cap- right? The capitalist anarcho capitalist uh, community. He's not a real libertarian. <laughs> and by CNN, he's not a Republican, <laughs> right? You know, and so <laughs> he's leftist scum. But what we try to do is is apply these principles that we believe in to modern politics and current events and an effort to get people to see the problems that exist with the way that we currently think and in that way in in an effort to get people to move towards libertarianism by challenging their core beliefs because here's the thing i i could i could just go out and do a a a podcast that only talks about these seven concepts and I would be uh, in liberty drafts and, <laughs> and beloved by the libertarian community. But it's when you take these principles and apply them to issues that people's old dogma start to get triggered. People start, if you go look at our Facebook page, the 87,000 Facebook fans that we have are consistently triggered by what I post and what I say. <laughs> because great. as a libertarian of 10 years, I'm so much further away from the way that they think in that left-right paradigm. And when you apply issues, uh, like Israel, for instance, is a great litmus test for people. Uh, people, <laughs> It is. It's, it's the ultimate, yeah, actually, if exactly. you want to think about it. it especially, Israel, esp- abortion, especially this, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it is. And so, and that's, that's what we're going to start with tonight, to where... You you take when you start talking about modern day issues. If I were to go, to go out and say what the president did yesterday was a good idea, well, to a certain segment of those eighty seven thousand libertarian curious people on our Facebook page, I'm I'm a right libertarian. I'm alt right. I'm conservative, or I'm a Republican. I'm a phony libertarian who's a lino, you know. And if I come out and said what Israel does in terms of the settlements is wrong and it's it does it violates the concept of peace. And then I would be tagged with you're just a leftist, left libertarian, throw you out of a helicopter, Bernie Sanders libertarian. And so th- there's those exist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what we have an issue when it's everybody loves the idea of the Libertarian Party and a third party. They love the idea of a Libertarian Republican caucus. They until love it's time the, to vote until the tires have to <laughs> touch the road. And once you spend all this time learning about the libertarian philosophy and you have to start applying it to mm-hmm. people's lives and the politics of today, that's when you start losing people. They all disappear. And that's when people get uncomfortable. And We Are Libertarians is about making people uncomfortable. I was, he, I was sent to this earth to afflict the comfortable, to annoy the regular person. Like, and like it's, it's just hard – being different, Galt, you know. Oh, I know. Yeah. So, <laughs> and so that's why I love the community that it's We Are Libertarians has built because we are people who are engaged in politics, engaged in our community, mm-hmm. and we're not Liberty LARPing, turtle, turtling ourselves in our little shells going, I'm just going to live in a world where Bitcoin is the currency and the rest of the world doesn't exist. Well, guess what? I got news for you. Bitcoin is a great advancement in the cause of human freedom, but... Until we can get back to trade and flesh. Hedge funds are now getting involved in your precious Bitcoin and have made it a bubble, and it's now not a currency. It's now a commodity that people are trading. So your idea of Bitcoin being a currency has been corrupted by the regular world, and Christians fall into this all the time. I was a Christian convert at 18, and I can tell you, as somebody who went from an atheist uh, background to a Christian at 18, I was a zealot. I was such a zealot. The converts are always the most zealot, uh, zealotous. And, you know, a- after 15 years of living as a Christian, I've moderated a lot because I've learned to understand. It's not even that I've moderated. I've actually become much more solid in my beliefs more ingrained in my beliefs, accepting of the offensive beliefs that, for instance, Jesus is the only way to heaven. That's something that I believe. Now, that's probably going to turn a lot of you off. But it's I don't. Just, it's, it's, it's just I don't, life. It's... I don't care. That's my belief. You can, now, you can now reconcile what I believe with what you believe, and we can have a conversation about what I believe and what you believe, and then that's called knowledge. That's called growth. No, bro, I'm calling for your job. Right. I'm calling because I'm offensive. (laughs) I don't like your shit. Right. I'm calling for your job. 
so so I want to I want to um, start by reading, uh, and then we'll get on with the discussion. Um, leader. <laughs> yep. This was in the American yeah. Conservative today. All right, I'm gonna uh, just let me get through this. I'm not saying shit. And then we're we're gonna get to full ranting. I know I've been talking a lot, but I'm trying to set You're this good. up. You're good. You're good. It's better than me. Um, they don't want to hear me. And then and then we're gonna give you full tad, full galt. <sighs> you don't want that because uh, I, think I think this last time we said Hitler was still alive. <laughs> this is called Phony Virtue is Ruining Western Society by William S. Smith in the American Conservative. Again, I will post this link in the show notes. What counts as virtue among Western elites? As Aristotle teaches, if you can identify what a society considers to be virtuous or good, you can understand the moral outlook of that society's institutions, from its schools to its foreign policy. One need only to study any gathering of American elite culture to see that virtue, traditionally centered in personal character, has become redefined as public sympathy for humanitarian causes. When watching cult any cultural awards programs, for example, one is treated to a parade of beautiful souls voicing support for a myriad of progressive causes. This moral preening has become so commonplace that a term has developed to characterize it, virtue signaling. The West moral outlook is now animated by the widespread belief that virtue is measured by one's professed sympathy for causes such as combating homelessness, extending civil rights for various protected groups, and decrying poverty in far-off places. And the more publicly ostentatious one is in attaching oneself to these causes, the more virtue one is assigned by our elite culture. So, and I'm not going to, to read all of this through. Uh, you know, the tradition, this... Um, traditional moral philosophy once recognized that within each individual there are two selves. The human soul is made up of a range of impulses, desires, passions, but there is also a voice in the soul that works to control these impulses and desires. St. Paul described this duality as the law of the flesh and the law of the spirit. Virtue, traditionally understood, belonged to those individuals who perform the inner work required to overcome unjust desires and shape his ten temperament according to something higher in his own nature. A person of character that must subject impulse to self-control. Confucius put it this way, that wherein the superior man cannot be equaled is simply this, his work which other men cannot see. So this is, a, I think, a great article uh, and that you all should take read through, but it introduces a great idea that, you know, we in the past and, and to a certain segment of our society, virtue is about the re so the wrestling of one in, in yourself the the concept of smaller and greater jihad and this is this was introduced to me by two of my muslim friends in high school after 911 happened uh, i had co uh, conversations all the time with my friends Musa and Issa Saeed Musa is a, a great documentarian about the modern muslim experience and was i think greatly shaped by 911 when we were seniors in high school and uh, I saw people turn on him, and he said, you know what, jihad isn't about, like, bombing people. There's two jihads. There's the smaller jihad, which people think of as bombing, you know, bombing Palestine, bombing Israel, for instance. And then there's the greater jihad. The greater jihad is the fighting of yourself, your conscience against your flesh. And every religion has this concept of doing the inner work. And... That was the idea, that, that, that you are self-aware enough to have those battles within yourself to fight your nature. Yes, every man is a lecherous pervert in some capacity of his life, but there's also a part of him that wrestles with that that says, I'm looking at her butt. I shouldn't say how nice her butt is because she's my coworker. That's how you can tell it. I have these natural impulses that are biologically bred in me that I want to procreate, but I have to control those impulses to treat this woman with dignity and respect. And so we have become disgusted by the Al Frankens and the Roy Moores of the world. Who has? Who, I haven't. Right. But that's why <laughs> I needed the wow. a, the amoral <laughs> the amoral Tad Weston. I don't here. give a shit about it. If you want to <laughs> right. have sex, whatever. That has nothing to do with the government. Right. So... 
Tad has a very different what? view. Yeah, we'll get into it. I just I know Tad. That's why I invited on with this this conversation. You have a problem with Al Franken having sex with people? Or? Well, he didn't. He just he t- yeah. He didn't do shit. Who who's had to put? Never mind. We'll get All right, hold on. We'll Let me finish setting it. We'll get into this. I don't even like Al Franken. We'll but get, we'll get into virtue this. virtue to the <laughs> left and to the cultural left, which has infected most of society, including libertarians, in many ways have it, it is how hard you can signal that you don't agree with that behavior well that's not virtue virtue is fighting the temptation to behave that way it is a personal struggle it is not a public display and we are in a weird place in society where we have completely lost sight of that where we have no concept of what virtue actually means and you, as a listener to this program, are always faced with different choices. Because what I try to do is I have my opinion and our guests have our opinions, but we try to give you the full range of opinions so you can then f- wrestle with things yourself and come down on the side of what you think is best. And if you look at something like Roy Moore, you have to wrestle with the fact that this guy is probably a former child molester and that he probably did those things that he's accused of doing al franken probably did those things that he did that he is accused of doing did he do all of them are all of the stories accurate probably not but are some of them true probably where's the truth it's somewhere in the middle we don't quite know but is it good to have al franken if you're a liberal in the senate well a lot of liberals think that it is good to have him in the senate long term right now no they're sacrificing him for the political short term to make Republicans look bad for supporting Roy Moore. If they throw Al Franken under the bus and say we don't support Al Franken, then the, the, Lib- the Democrats have a leg to stand on and say, Republicans, are you going to support Roy Moore? And they're trying to depress. Yes, their, right we are. They know they're going to get a Democratic vote if they sacrifice Al Franken in Minnesota. But what they're trying to do is to play a short-term game by throwing one safe Democrat under the bus to try and depress the vote of Republicans in Alabama to give Doug Jones a fighting chance. So that's – now, if you're a person in Minnesota, that sucks. If you voted for Al Al Franken, that's – well, yeah. (laughs) Al Franken, let's be honest. Al Franken, many of you may not recall this, but Al Franken got elected in 2008 – by basically stealing the election from Norm Coleman. Yep. It was it was an, it was by hundreds of votes that he won that election and he just kept appealing it so many mm-hmm. times that Norm Coleman and the Republicans eventually just gave, gave up, up and said no. And that's how Al Franken got elected to the Senate. But he has become a popular Democratic senator and here's the funny part about Al Franken is that he always kept his nose clean and his head down and just did the work. That's why he became so popular, but he wanted to run for president because of his own ego. And he started going out and doing book tours. He's always been and making in it for comments. Himself, though. Exactly, and that's how he's, he's a got comedian. Down, he's right? always, yeah, he's always been. In it. He's never been in it for actually the politics side of things. It's just been a right. It's what people charge Donald Trump for, but but there's I mean, so pretty many, much the same thing. There's so many people who are morally outraged at Al Franken and want to scream, you know, Al Franken, Bill Clinton. But then they don't want to talk about Roy Moore, and they don't want to be consistent about Roy Moore. They don't want to be consistent about David Vitter. They don't want to be consistent about all these guys. or And it's we're devolving into tribalism. And we'll be, we're driving— Devolving? We, we've been there. We're, we're in tribalism. <laughs> we've been there. A lot of it because of Donald Trump. And <clears throat> social media has that. made it worse. Identity tribes. Exactly right. Mm-hmm. And at the core of identity politics is virtue signaling. And libertarians are are not supposed to play the identity politics game because what that does is that's the rule of man and not the rule of law. Identity politics violates the core principle of libertarianism's rule of law. Now, you want to explain rule of law, Chris? No. No? All right. You steal something, you get your hand cut off, damn it. Right. There, that's it. The rules are written <laughs> down and agreed upon. Oh, that's Sharia. That's Sharia, right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought we were still on the. The rule of law is that the rules are written down and are preserved generation to generation and followed by everybody, and everybody knows what the rules are. It's consistency. 
the rule of man is that we don't give a shit about those laws. We can change them as the public opinion goes. As the wind blows. As if people think and that there's this... There's too many to know. Exactly right. The idea that the... Uh, see, this is where libertarians... Harry writes, LOL, rules are written down. <laughs> this is where anarchists violate one of the core principles of libertarianism. They say, oh, write down the rules, fine. But... That's the problem, right? Is that you're being governed by man. You're being governed by the whim of your community. You're being governed by innocent. You're governed by guilty until proven innocent. And there are no rules in the court of public opinion. That's why Rome fell. Which is why I'm completely in support of Roy Moore and and Al Franken. I don't. I don't it's, care. Why? What do you mean? Why? I well. I mean, is there any evidence? Oh. Honestly, you can make more of more of an evidence for uh, Al Franken than you can for Roy Moore. I, it's what they're charged with. I mean, based and, on photographs, yeah, yeah, and I, and even that, the photograph is that something you have hard proof that Al Franken literally touched a boob or whatever. Maybe it was unwanted, whatever. But he didn't. Like if, he, if you're looking at the photo, he clearly is a joke. He's a comedian on right. tour. Like, what is that to get upset about? I, I, I've never understood it. It, I, I, I don't get it. I, I don't understand why someone would be calling for his job. Okay, oh, he's a sleaze, but he's a fucking comedian. He's been on Saturday Night Live. Of course, he's got shit. He's got. There's a picture on Drudge Report of him in a diaper. Like what? Really? Like yeah. Like what? What do you? What <laughs> is this? Okay, I understand that you're. At some point, you have to actually look at what these things are and if there's something there. I understand. Listen, if there, if it's unwanted and she comes out that this is sexual harassment or this was complete, this was rape or whatever, that that's different. But when, okay, he we were doing an act and he stuck his tongue in my throat or whatever we were making out. Okay, that I, I don't consider that sexual harassment. I, I, I don't care. It may be unwanted, but it's not – he's not a rapist. He's not – it, that that, that there, there, there's degrees to this shit. It's mm -hmm. not because it, it minimizes actual people who have been raped in sure. my in my eyes, and it's it's ridiculous. It, it's just complete pandering on both sides. Of oh, look what he did. Look what he look what she did. Now, if you want to get into the underage shit with uh, Roy Moore or whatever, that yeah, okay. You have a couple of accusers come forward fifty years later, and there's a signing okay maybe there was some shit going on there i don't know i but to sit here and say that this guy is a a child rapist that's a that's a fucking big claim to be making in public especially for someone that's run for office and if you don't have any evidence other than a signature which pretty much could be fake i'm not gonna go into it but it there's it could have been fake. what kind of evidence do you want from a bedroom from 50 years ago yeah, exactly. Like, and, and, and if this guy is truly a rapist, why are you ra waiting till now to come out to talk about it? If he's if he's had this past, why is this not come out and him been locked up? Because you're doing a disservice, it's, especially with sexual predators like that. If he's a legit predator, this is not. Well, they this, didn't have this, the this is not the, to do it until me too. This is not Where's your answer. What do you mean they didn't he, have the courage have the to courage? do it until the rest of the world stood up with him and told them they got it? They didn't have the courage to no. come out. That that's that that's the problem. That's a big deal. To, that's life changing to someone. The, I mean, somebody who if is, that happened, somebody that's life no, if it did, if it did, yeah, but it's life changing. But so you so are on you, the hook then for everyone else who's after you that from yeah, that. Yeah. Would you agree with that, or would there? I mean, are you you think you're the only victim? Obviously, if there are all these victims that came out from when they were seventeen, I, I know it's a touchy issue to get into. I'm just looking at it when it comes out now today in this. There's no it, way to get that proof. It, it, there isn't. I know. I know. It's fucked up. There's no way to get it. It's fucked up. But to sit here and say that, oh, because you see this on both sides. It's, oh, he's a sexual harasser. He's a – and this shit, it's just – these terms get thrown out, and right. it's, it, it's complete – it's like calling somebody a Nazi or whatever because you disagree with him almost. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that these women weren't. I, I, I don't know, but it's like, shit, you can't, you can't just sit here and say – Oh, sexual harassment or whatever. And mm -hmm. then even to uh, – I, I don't even think any of the women in Roy Moore's case said that he actually had sex with them, though, even though they were underage dating or whatever. I do I do think right. there was an underage dating. A mother said, well, you should be 
you should be happy that the the, the older man so the, so to break the it down DA. the 14 year old is the the serious one and she's the one who said he twice brought her over to his house and one time put her hand on his penis when he was in his whitey tidies the then there was a 15 year old who said that he was trying to rape her but as soon as she got loose and free he didn't pursue her then there was a 16 a 17 and a and a 18 year old who all basically said it was it, we didn't have sex it was consensual he was a gentleman but it was creepy that I was young, and now that I look back, I go, yeah, "Why? What yeah. was? What was he up to?" And like for people who say, "Oh, well, people got married young at that time," or this was the this was 1980, and if it was such a, uh, it was 1979. But if it were an acceptable thing in that community, why was he banned from the mall? And it, it well, just came out too that it's kind of like, oh, yeah. But one guy who was the manager of the mall in 1983, three years after all these claims came out, is when he was the manager, and he said, no, he was never banned. Well, he was there three years after Roy Moore was banned from the mall, and it, and stopped going. So that's not a credible thing. There's a lot of conspiracy theory Absolutely. theory bullshit going on with the Roy Moore stuff, and what I really see from these people is they're they're new to politics. They have completely bought into the idea that anything that is non-right media, like yep. the Washington Post, is not valuable information. I reject that wholeheartedly. I think you have to read the mainstream media skeptically and critically, just like you would if you're reading the Daily Coast or the or National Review or the Infowars or anything you else. You would read we that the same way. With exactly skepticism, right. but you would still read it. Exactly right, and I do. I listen to Alex Jones, and I treat him with the same level of skepticism and criticism that I do the Washington Post. And because if you're going to, a, you have to look at every story individually. You exactly. Can't, you can't. You can't compare what he's allegedly charged with with what. Al Franken's charged right. with, or whoever. That's what people just want to say. Well, he's on the left. He did this. He's on the right. He did this. That washes out. Let's just fucking go on with it. Right. And it, that's a huge problem that I have with this is that people are people who were annoyed by their friends and the media with Roy Moore are now saying, ha ha, we got a liberal in Conyers and Franken. Exactly. It's the moral mm -hmm. equivalent. Let's get rid of him. And then if you defend Al Franken and say, let's take a step back and really look at all this information. It wasn't until the seventh accuser that the that Politico put out the day that people started calling for his resignation that that was the one that I went, okay, there's a pattern here. He clearly does Absolutely. this. This is a credible report from a very credible publication in the Politico in Politico. So clearly this guy's doing this and or he did this. And so then you have to look at it and you have to go, I think he's a piece of garbage senator. I don't care if he stays or goes. In fact, I'd prefer that he left because he's popular and he's smart and he's good, and he's good at being a socialist. Get rid of him. The thing about that's why I want him gone. It's not that he did. Mm -hmm. It's it's because I'm I'm with you, Tad. Where I just look at it and I go, okay, it, I'm not. I, it's not that I don't care. My thing right. is is listen. You're talking about the internet. It's a global thing. You are literally talking about a senator from a state. Let that state decide, it, and for everybody else who gets pissed off about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got to have – it's a system we have, whether you like it or not. But somebody asked me, they're like, what do you think about this? I was like, to be honest with you, I don't give a shit. Now, if it was somebody who in Indiana, you know, who was getting right. accused of this, I would have a way more in-depth opinion or whatever. But it's absolutely going to affect the vote totals. It it's is. It's absolutely going to affect federal law in your life. It is. Mm -hmm. It is, even but, though it's Alabama. So you should. There's care nothing. About there's it. nothing I can do about it. Then, what do you want me to do about it? Right. Well, I can't, I can't vote anybody in or I, out or whatever. I would argue. That I would. I would hope that people were informed enough to. I would. I would argue that every single person listening has influence, and people say, "Well, what am I going to do about it?" The publish button on your Facebook and Twitter is incredibly powerful, and if six years ago. Uh, Chris Galt and I and Creighton started this podcast, and we now reach tens of thousands of people yep. across the nation. And we have that ability because we, A, have talent, B, we're smart, and C, we got in at the right time, and D, uh, and Google Plus. we just kept doing it in Google+. Plus. <laughs> like, And there isn't anybody listening My who can't do that. <laughs> Roger Paxton listened to We Are Libertarians, didn't like what he heard, felt he could do something different and better, and he's done he's done something different, not better, but different. 
you know and so that and that is capitalism that is freedom that you hear or are involved in society and you speak up and do something differently and then that starts to shift people towards you and away from the thing that you don't like and i think that every single person has uh the opportunity to ex exercise their personal moral values and their personal ethics every single time they hit enter on Facebook or Twitter. Every single time you post something anywhere, you are personally persuading public opinion because we live in an age where it's like a beehive. Yeah, there may be one or two bees over here buzzing and th the rest of the, the, the bees may be in this section of the hive, but if you buzz loud enough they and you find some honey they may that's how humans work that's spontaneous order one person finds gold in california in 1865 and then the country moves out there like one person starts bitcoin sticks with it for six years and then all of a sudden hedge fund managers take notice and now it's at 18,000. like the world you look at elizabeth warren who we talked about a couple weeks ago elizabeth warren is this little known professor writes this paper a senator who's rewriting the federal code notices your paper and starts the CFPB. And the next thing you know, you're a front runner for 2020 presidential elections. Like the world moves in very weird mm -hmm. ways and very, and so the power that, of just... the individual is incredibly powerful. And every time you support Roy Moore or you argue in support of Roy Moore or argue against Roy Moore or any one of these cases, you are contributing to the buzz of the hive. And I think that you have power as an individual and you need to make those choices. Secondly, I would argue that uh, politics is power. And there's like this meme that libertarians always post, and I'm sure we've posted, I just didn't find it, where it is a politician with a podium on the end of a board over a cliff. And then at the Everybody other end is a hundred people. And then one guy's walking off and says, all you got to do is just step off. And that is political power in a, in a very visual way. And what people have done to Al Franken is people stepped off. And Roy Moore, people piled on to the board and said, he's our, in our tribe, we're going to protect him. He says he didn't do it. We've made up these conspiracy theories to you know, refute that. And then that just becomes this alternate reality. And that's a very scary thing because once you just start making up facts and then a segment of society just believes it because the other people believe it, like because that's, they're on that's your scary. Team. Because yeah, they're on I your mean, team. And I, that's the illusion of knowledge. Knowledge is really like us sitting here and the three of us have very clear experiences and very clear sets of knowledge. We sit together, we converse about the knowledge. People listening are listening into our conversation. They're combining our knowledge with their knowledge and then they pass it on to their children the next generation and it builds and it builds and it builds and so you have to be very careful about what viruses you are supporting in the in the human uh b brain system i mean it, that's really where the concept of the meme comes in is that richard dawkins felt that and i may have this wrong but richard dawkins felt like yeah i think it was richard branson richard branson <laughs> richard dawkins felt that religion was a virus of the mind it was a mind virus that corrupted the human operate brain operating system and therefore needed to be eliminated to have humans work optimally i couldn't disagree with him more he's yeah, but the bug but I look at a lot of what's going on on the left and the right and on my Facebook feed and I go, wow, there's some really serious mind viruses out there right now. Yeah. I I tend to come to pretty much everything with the uh, with an open mind and then if someone's charged with something, I'd like to I'd like to try to say I'm think they're innocent until proven guilty. I mean, even though I'm not in a court of law, but I think you have to break everything down by case and then as far as accusations go, you can ac be accused of anything, but I, especially running for public office, I don't know. I mean, it, it, I, I, I literally don't. But the thing is, if if Roy Moore actually is what these accusers are saying he is, then he shouldn't be just losing in the court of public opinion. He should be tried. You know, I, this should be – he should be tried for his crimes. It shouldn't just be, oh, well, you're going to lose an election to a Democrat, and then everything's okay. Well, because it's not okay. It's not justice losing an election for his victims. That's a good I point. mean, that, that's not that's not that's not justice. I, no. I, I, in a way, I I do agree with you, but I also like innocent until proven guilty is a legal precedent. 
Absolutely. And it doesn't apply to voluntary exchanges. Like an election to run as a candidate is a voluntary choice. To work at Netflix doing House of Cards is a voluntary choice. It's a voluntary relationship. And so if if uh, Netflix doesn't want to hire you or fight for you, that's their choice. And you, absolutely. And so public opinion is has always existed and always will exist. I'm saying how I view things. I don't know of how course. anybody else views. But shit. I, I've just seen this this <laughs> out there a lot, and I just as a libertarian have a problem with it because I see people not separating the concepts of force versus voluntary, and mm-hmm. like Roy Moore, which is why I have no problem with George Takei blowing that guy or whatever on the beanbag chair. Like, what the fuck, dude? It's the 70s. He brings you back to his apartment after seven drinks from the bar, and you're com- you're complaining that right. your pants are down. Like, what? Come- like, that's not sexual assault. Come on, let's be honest. So, But if people go and vote for Roy Moore, then that's their voluntary choice that they still made absolutely. knowing what he did. Absolutely. And they're giving somebody that I think is a moral midget the power of government force. And that's why this is a more important choice to me. And he shouldn't have got that far. It, th- and everybody in Alabama knew that this that this was Apparently, out Apparently. Yeah. I mean, that's what reports are saying. That's so, the, I mean, the, what's the, that's why how much waters is win. holding? Yeah, the post. He's going to win. They already well, knew. He's not going to. Not, well, 90% of Republicans just don't believe that this is true. They, they believe Roy Moore. Moore. The world's round. It's yeah, eighty. I think it's eighty-seven uh, percent of Republicans just believe Roy Moore. And steam they believe mel- and steam beams melt. <laughs> yeah, and so it, nope, it, we're not going down there. <laughs> it, well, it's because uh, w- and we talked about the propaganda loop that Steve Bannon has no. created on this, and Steve Bannon launched another little nuke. I, I really think Steve Bannon is a cancer on on politics today now. Like, you know, you see what he did to Mitt Romney earlier this week where he was like, you know, Mitt Romney came out and basically said, Roy Moore isn't fit to be in the Senate. He's a he's a stain on American politics. And Mitt Romney is a guy who's been in the political spotlight he, literally his entire life. His his dad ran for president and uh, his, he was Mexican. He, yeah, he's a senator. Way. And he couldn't run for president because he was he was born, born in Mexico, Mexico. Yeah. which if you want to get into that, that's. We can go down the Mormon loophole. We don't have to. Yeah, I but, know your listeners probably won't like it. But literally, he's <laughs> he's a guy who has lived a squeaky clean life and is wow. probably one of the most— Because he's got seven wives to clean up his mess. Oh, he's got one wife and, like, 18 kids, okay? It's There's a joke. A, but— <laughs> And he's so he he can he can speak from a place of uh, he's not a hypocrite. And Steve Bannon comes out and says, you know, Mitt Romney can say what he wants, but you know what, brother, you didn't serve in Vietnam. You were off, off being a Mormon over across the seas, and you were because he was a missionary, I oh, think, in, a missionary France. in France. Yeah. yeah, and I laughed. I thought it was pretty good. And your sons didn't serve in Iraq and Afghanistan, did they? No, they well, didn't. Donald Trump got a deferment because of his feet. I think Roy Moore was got a deferment too. Like Steve Bannon was a naval officer, so he served his country. But that's a very but that little propagandic technique you're going to see used against Mitt Romney because Bannon knows immigration, abortion. You know, he, listen, I he may have raped those kids, but do you want a liberal in in politics who will I vote would for argue abortion? No. R- not for abortion. I don't care about abortion, but <laughs> but that's my point. It's like he's he's great at propaganda because he goes, uh, he, literally, Steve Bannon will never affect a vote. Or, I mean, uh, the Alabama senator will not break a tie on abortion. There, but Alabama Steve, will never go. Hold Democrat. on, Steve knows how to push that button, and with the military thing, Mitt Romney will now forever be a draft dodger because of Steve Bannon launching this little mind virus against Mitt Romney from the Republican base. And it's and he's a propagandist. He's a Goldman Sachs financier who dresses like a homeless person to pretend he's one of the blue collar people. And as a libertarian, I completely support it. I love it. <laughs> right? Why? Why? Because he can do what he wants. I don't give a shit. But you you support somebody who I is support just his man- right to do it. I don't, manipulating I don't care what he's people. He's manipulating people. If you're stupid enough to be manipulated, then it's your fault. Galt, what do you have to say? Democracy's just never going to work. <laughs> it's not. You're absolutely right, Galt. Oh, Democracy, the god that doomed failed. from the beginning. <laughs> Why we you... just get stupider. It's like idiocracy. The it movie. is. Right. It completely every, is. Every election, we get dumber. But as a libertarian, you have to support his right to 
undermine whatever well, Mitt Romney's doing. Why, why, why is anybody even going after Mitt Romney? Who cares? It, well, it, who cares what it, Mitt Romney says? It, it's because he's Evan try- McMullen. It's because he's trying to run for senator of Utah, and so if if who he cares? if let him run for senator. Orrin Hatch decides in the next month to step down, he's old as fuck anyway. He will end up being the senator from Utah, and okay. then he will be a very prominent critic of of the president. And Steve Bannon doesn't want nobody that. nobody gives a shit about Mitt Romney. You can tell that by the election. But people will give a shit because. Steve Bannon. No, is, he's gonna come in and say I'm holier than thou. He's playing yeah, 3D chess. He's because he he will be the Republican senator who is the antithesis to. Uh, but you Trump, know you know more, and, we're, hold on, and will be used in the media every single day. You yeah. know you know he was the face of the never Trumpers and everything. That's right. why Bannon hates him because they created the dossier. Mm-hmm. It's you personal. know that right? I yeah. mean, it, this is a lot deeper than what. Yeah, it is comes being from on. Rick Wilson, who was his campaign yeah. manager. Started Rick the Wilson, steel, who's the steel the dossier. Cuck. You got you know about him on Twitter just getting raped by 4chan, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Go and look at his. Never mind. It, it's a, it's like a year. And but a you said that you know we started this by saying you know libertarians and purists and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and then you have two different Republicans yeah. on totally different sides of ideology Absolutely. that are used against each other politically that believe in totally different things, and they still they work together on things. Sure. That's where that's where libertarians need to get. And that's such a great point, Galt. Like, and that's why we I, won't move forward. But until that's we why get there. that everyone is a libertarian. As a libertarian, you have to take what you can get. Is <laughs> yeah. why I'm with whatever uh, working with Democrats or Republicans, whatever, whatever gets through. That's libertarian. I mean, whether it's a tax cut or whether it's decriminalizing a drug or whatever, it's I don't care who does it as long as the people we'll are more, more free people and less like less that. regulation. I mean, it, come on, it's. Well, that's why I mean, that's why Roger and I promote each other. Roger may <laughs> deep down think that I'm not a libertarian and that he's much more pure than I am and he's better than me. And he, he is. He tells me that because he's uh, obnoxious, <laughs> ostentatious, uh, a, a buffoon. But he he does a good show and I do a good show and we're on different sides of a, not a lot of issues but po- politics. Like we agree on a, on core principles. But we are on opposite sides of how we should go about politics. And but that doesn't mean that we can't be friends and that we can't promote each other's work Mm -hmm. and that you're not on the same side. Right. You are exactly right. Like, because at the end of the day, I'm going to vote for Roger or Roger's best friend, Daryl Perry, way before I'm going to vote for Trump or Hillary. (laughs) You know what I mean? I voted for Daniel or Perry. Really? Yeah. I liked him. Did you? I didn't hear my message. I think message, you're. Right. But I think you're I full like of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're full. Ted's been full of shit this whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> is it, isn't he the guitarist from like Guns N' Roses? No, something? no, that, that's uh, Slash, not Daryl Perry. No, what's the Perry guy? That's the guitar? <laughs> Ted is just full of it every time he comes I'm not on full the show. Of anything. All day. I'm full of uncut fried pickles. <laughs> Oh, Steve silliness. Perry. That's who I was Steve thinking Steve Perry. Of. That's Journey. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Guns and Roses, Kiss, they're all the same. Uh, what were we Yeah, pretty much. About? Uh, well, they're all 80s rock bands. <sighs> how how do you All right. So to tie it all back together, I mean, and Trump is the greatest test of conservatives and libertarians. Liberals, it's easy for them. They just outright hate the guy. But when you look at um, – uh, if you're a conservative, like I listen to Ben Shapiro a lot, and Ben Shapiro just outright says he's a moral troll. Like he, there's just nothing about him that is good, and there's nothing about – I didn't vote for him. I'm not going to vote for him again. But, if you're looking for morals to come from government, you're going to have a bad time. But <laughs> if you put people in a position of leadership that are corruptible – and he, and let's say Donald Trump is somebody that uh, let's say Putin does have goods on him and he's using bribery and blackmail to get him to do something. Isn't that a problem? I mean, w- at, here's the question. If at what which, where is no. your, where is your line? Are you 100 percent Tad? I my don't, line. I don't hold on. I don't. Let me ask the question. I'm, I wasn't even ready to talk. Tad, you had too many beers over at the stack. <laughs> I had one beer. You had two. She comes over. He, one he goes, forty-four ounce beer. He goes, "Can I have a beer?" And she goes, 16 or twenty-four." And he goes, "I want one." 
and we all just looked at him. He's just on a different plane. And I, and then I started. I live in a different world than everyone else. I started laughing because then I realized he meant, no, I don't want 16 beers. I want one beer. But she brought (laughs) him a drink 16. She brought him two 24 ounce beers. So he's full of 40 ounces of beer. I I just got rid of it. I'm good. I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but what what is the moral line for you when you look at when you go in and cast your vote for someone? Mm-hmm. What is the line for you in terms of I just want to win and I want a I want a person who's going to vote. I don't care about winning. Values. I voted for Gary Johnson. I I didn't care about winning. Okay, so it's so that, I knew I knew Trump was going to win. Number one, number two, I don't give a shit what anybody says. Okay, I mean whatever comes out of their mouth. I mean lying's one thing on the morality meter, but. I care about what actual policies that you could get done or what you're going to get done or what you say you're going to get done. Now, if you don't get something done, I mean, it took Barack, – Barack Obama couldn't even close Guantanamo Bay in eight years. All he had to do was close it. I mean, it, it, like – and I don't even care that he didn't. It's just like if you come in, you're, you say, I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and then all of a sudden you're doing it, all right, well, at least you're doing what you said what you said you do. I find that to be more – I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. What, what are you talking about morally? Who's your favorite congressman? Congressman? Yeah, Andre Carson. <laughs> he always votes. How he says he's gonna hunt. <laughs> no, I hate that guy. Actually, <laughs> that was just the first one that came to mind. I mean, what about you, Galt? I mean, you and I um, worked on a campaign Justin together. Justin Amash, that's my favorite. Yes, you and I worked on a campaign. I like the Amash. He was a good dude. Uh, you and I worked on a campaign together. Yeah. And uh, one of the most morally reprehensible people I've ever met in my life. Uh, you don't have to say anything, but I'll say it for us. Rupert? It was a, no, Rupert's <laughs> awesome. Rupert lives exactly like you think he does. I'm joking. He was the biggest mistake of my political career, but it was good for the party. And I still to this day think, why did I do that? Uh, well, a paycheck. You know, and that was it. And I look back and I go, you know, now I'm I'm in a position where uh, I don't have to do that because I'm not in that same position but that's the complicated choice that you have to make where you have to go, listen, I'm a party official, and I think this guy's a real scumbag. He walked into my store. Really? A few years later. Uh-huh. <laughs> talking about wearing a Trump shirt, all hyped uh, up about the election. Of course. Oh, man. Yeah. He, I just I got that under guy. my skin. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, like, do you look back at that campaign, for instance, and go, uh Yeah, it wasn't the best campaign. But yeah. it, I learned a lot from it. Right. And I, and I met, I mean. I made so many connections in the party. I mean, I don't. I wouldn't have went anywhere without that. Yeah, I needed that. Well, and I think you I, also I came back from California for that. Yeah, you know? and so. I, and I don't think that you knew. No, going into <laughs> it, I didn't. Well, and that's the thing. Like you sometimes, and people don't understand this. You get into something, and then you go two months in, you're like, ugh, yeah. yikes. Well, there were two of us, remember? Two right. campaign managers, right? And there was only one after like a month. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was me. Who's the other? <laughs> Charles, oh Eaton. yeah, Eaton. Xavier. I know he had no. a, he had Never other Eaton. stuff to do. Yeah, yeah. no, uh, yeah, but I mean, and so I think sometimes we look at these situations and we take somebody's like, well, you worked on that campaign, you aren't a moral person. You go, yeah, but here's the whole story, and you don't know the whole story, and. That's true. You know, I never thought about it like that. You never give people the benefit of the doubt mm-hmm. when it's like you're trying to make a cheap political point of you're less moral than me, you're less ethical. Yeah. I throw that to the wind. I'm just like, whatever. What's shiny? That's what a lot of this identity politics brings out. I know, out. it it's, is. It's, it's not about facts. It's about you versus me. There's no right. consistency it's you on versus ideology. versus me, them versus us. I mean, so how, how do we live in a world of identity politics, Tad? You don't. You kill yourself. <laughs> I need you to focus. <laughs> I'm joking. That, I know Ted needs are. more beer. I do. I do. <laughs> I, I'm, running, I'm running dry. <laughs> Run on a, we're about a quarter tank. No, uh, as far, like, how do you live in this? I I don't know. There's so many factors, it seems like now. It used to just be, oh, we had, you know, four newspapers, and then there, you had the state, the local, and then, you know, the New York Times and the Coast papers. Mm-hmm. And that's where you got your news and what, what to think from. And it was other, oh, do you want pretty much, I mean, let's be honest. It used to be Republicans and Democrats, and they overlapped. 60 percent i mean right yeah. you were voting on like three before the internet three there were two identities yeah and then, <laughs> yeah now there's a hundred i know right Z, i want there's only two Zer. genders though <laughs> i can tell you that you can have all the identities you want but there's only two genders 
and one co-host. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't know where I was going with that, but it's just it, there's so much shit anymore. You gotta. I don't know. It'd be nice I, to have some some shit goggles. I, I, I Well, I think I think it really comes down to. Di- I think maybe <laughs> and and kind of where I've come down on it. You've got to take some time away from it all to step back and examine what you really believe and yeah. who you really are and what you will accept. So when those choices come along, you know where you stand. Because I think if you're just constantly in in a perpetual biz, a perpetual motion machine and you're perpetually busy, then you don't sit there and take the time to think about what you really believe. And a lot of people are, and they'll just hear one or two things. How on... I don't know, a radio, or they'll see a headline on a TV. And then it's like, do you have that baseline of what you actually believe that you've right. thought out? That's the main thing, is trying to figure out where you actually stand yeah. baseline-wise, and then where, on what side does this fall, whatever issue you're talking about. or what, who, know, like, who knows? There's so much shit. It's like everything nowadays if is politicized. If you're asking yourself that question right now, the, I I always tell people to start at the smallest political quiz. Absolutely, mm-hmm. start right there. It gives you ten issues that you can. If you don't know the answer to one of them, then you can do some research about right. it, and it's not overwhelming. And then you'll get an idea of where you stand, and you can start from there. Yeah, you know, just like, Google "world smallest political quiz." It's also you go to the wearelibertarians dot com and look for "path to liberty," and uh, it's right there. The, you click that, and it it tells you to take that first. But yeah, I think I and, think uh, in sharing things. You see these headlines and you go, oh, this it, this agrees with my bias. Let me share it. And yep. I take a beat and read it first. Yep. Yeah, just the headline. I mean, you can get completely fucked out on headlines if you just read the headline. And then you can go through the articles and be like, well, wait a minute. This doesn't All even this say shit, what the headline said. Yeah, this this <laughs> makes nothing, no sense. And then it's like, well, what conclusion? I, nobody really stops to think what the conclusion yeah what what it i think we all just need to slow down a little bit because it's all everything's 10 second oh it's a tweet Tech, we gotta share this yeah share so that. much information we gotta be the first one on this we gotta be the first one on that you oh al franken did this he grabbed a tent oh <laughs> but it's like oh shit he's a rapist whatever maybe he is but but you've got to stop and sit here and think dissect the prop what the actual situation is situation by situation yeah. and and think about it i mean you just don't come to a conclusion in two seconds. I mean, that's the worst thing you can do, honestly. Yeah, and I think we, we're we just so quick to comment. We don't give any time to actually reflect on right. what, what we're actually thinking. Yeah, these little serotonin boxes that we've developed for ourselves on our phones. I got two of them. Yeah, I mean, it really, and, you know, I've got two iPads and a phone and a computer and uh, two screens at work. And, I'm like, I'm immersed in technology all day, and I love it. But at the same time... Like, are you doing things that are just trying to get attention? Are you attention-seeking to get serotonin? Like, that's a bad strategy for life because that's bad for your brain. Especially if you're decision-making off of that, too. Exactly like, right. I mean, like, if you're – if I've noticed that the worst decisions I make – Are impulse. Are impulsive decisions with my phone in my hand. If, and if I just took a second to – and I do this now. I didn't do this until, like, this year – Set it down, take some time, walk away from the issue. People are, they they don't need, you can say, I'm going to take a break, you know? And sometimes, sometimes saying you're going to take a couple weeks doesn't work out the way you think it will. But if you just, but that's not your decision. Like, you're not saying and doing, the things that have caused me problems in my life are impulsive. And I think the president, if you look at the president. Oh, he's got a big problem with tweeting. Yeah, and and I will be honest. Like I went and looked at his tweets today because I wanted to see what he said about Al Franken. Very presidential. It looked like Barack Obama's Twitter feed. If you go pull up you his know, Twitter he feed, hired, right? really, he yeah. hired Obama to write. Well, I don't yeah. have Twitter. You, oh, okay. I use I Discord, and Google Plus. So, so <laughs> who is on Google Plus? Oh, everyone. Who are you talking Sir, to? Sergey and the other guy that invented I, Google. I mean, it's the third largest social network. There's millions of people. Because they rate people MySpace. and put people in Google+, Plus, force them into it. It's all bots, all Russian bots. Exactly. You want a YouTube channel? Here, have some Google+. Plus. Nah, I'm good, fam. They force, you to, get, they on force you to get one. Yeah. yeah anyway. So if you look at his Twitter feed, Sorry, it's Google. all 
Here, pull up Trump's Twitter feed. I don't, I don't have, have Twitter. I just I told you. It. Yeah. So uh, Trump, for four days, has not tweeted anything crazy. And I think maybe he's got his uh, his impulse. He's got somebody. He's been tweeting about Pearl Harbor. Right. Hmm. Nothing offensive like them slanting eyes. Bomb Pearl Harbor. <laughs> but it, it's so good when he does that. I know. It's I, uh... But. What are you talking about, Alfred? It's not good because it fuels the same fire that we're talking about. Exactly. Be- and and that's the problem. The with- same kind of impulse reactions to everything so instead I- of stopping and thinking through. I have two theories on this. Okay. First. You realize there's a Donald Jr. He could be the one tweeting this. Let me start uh, with the more scandalous uh, of the two. What tweet am I supposed to be looking no- for? I mean, just look. There's no tweet, right? There's nothing on there that's red meat where you go, oh, that's Trump. That's classic Trump. I don't know, he's talking shit about Pelosi in this one, but this was from, like, three days ago. That's what I'm saying. Like, four days, it just kind of stopped. So, I think, uh, whatever. I, I, to, I, I don't care. Hold on. All right. I'm going to mute I'm gonna mute you. I got you muted. All right, I want you to listen to this, because Trump, uh, I said in an episode a week or two ago, like, he doesn't sound very good. And then at the end of the press conference about Jerusalem yesterday... He started slurring, and I don't know if he has dentures and we just didn't know about it or what, or if he's having a stroke or dry mouth or or he's exhausted because of his, a- his, of his age and his diet is two Big Macs, two filet of fish and a malted. But uh, this was him at the end of the press conference yesterday afternoon. Hold on, sorry. To possible and possibilities. And finally, I asked the leaders of the region, political and religious, Israeli and Palestinian, Jewish and Christian and Muslim, to join us in the noble quest for lasting peace. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Israel. God bless the Palestinians. And God bless the United States. Thank you very much. Did he turn into Liza Minnelli there? The United States doll. It sounded like he was biting his tongue. Yeah. Or bit his tongue or something. Exactly. But And then there's been no crazy tweets ever since. So maybe he's dead and there's a robot now. Maybe it's Dave. Have you ever seen Dave with Kevin Klein? Great movie. He brings in his CPA and they fix the federal budget. And over pizza, it's great. Great movie. But the – so he's either dead – and that's why he's not creating crazy stu- stuff. Or he's realized I'm the greatest detriment to myself. Because if you, I don't think he gives a shit. To be honest. Well, somebody has started to give a shit. And well, I, I think it came from the whole they were going to get him for obstructing justice, which maybe he technically hurt his can't feelings do, about but... the whole dentures thing. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that hurt his feelings, and he's been moping. So here's the thing <laughs> about uh, Trump's. I don't know. You you guys both like Trump, right? I don't dislike. I don't dislike him. I'm not. I didn't vote for him. I I knew he was going to win because, I mean, he's a shit poster. Right. But I, I mean, he's doing what he says he's going to do. Have some everybody hate, man. Everybody who I don't <laughs> like kind of hates him. But, right. So I go off that. That's more. That's where I get my morality from. <laughs> if somebody hates you, who I think's a shithole. Then whatever. All right. You might be <laughs> decent. I don't know. Go. Cool. I look at a politics. I don't dis- like or dislike people. Okay. As yeah, people. I, yeah, I, I think he's a good <clears throat> dude. I mean, look at his kids. His kids are that not like mass said, I don't think he's. I don't think he's been the greatest thing. Right. I don't think America's great right now. Still, I think if you're, but, I think if you're a Trump fan, you want him to get out of his own way because, like, the last yeah. two, the last two weeks have been really good for him. Yeah. Like it's come out. Basically, people are starting to realize the judiciary is being transformed. Mm-hmm. He's All just of those lower coin appointments. He's just putting yeah. in a oh, man. ton of Federalist Society and like libertarians yeah. would by and large agree with federal Federalist Society judges because mm-hmm. they're they're strict Constitution. constitutionalists. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he's the economy is killing it. Like not just Bitcoin, but the economy at large there's, there's is faith doing well in, under him. Yeah, right. We've had uh, the the stock market's doing real well. The uh, unemployment is at the lowest point yeah. in 17 years. We passed tax reform. The nope. tax reform oh, is going man. to pass, and I've been waiting for that for a long time. <laughs> that's something that that a lot of libertarians. That's not a great tax bill, but it, no. at least the corporate taxes are something that could hopefully. So when here's the deal with with corporate taxes with business taxes, if it's like the Patreon thing I was talking about earlier, for every dollar that Patreon takes out of this or every fee that there is, so 
if you give me ten dollars and I get nine, well, if I get nine fifty, well, that's great because then I'm going to spend that money elsewhere, right? And so with corporate taxes, with business taxes, the the money comes from three distinct places. First, they raise the prices of the goods. And they don't do that because what that does is prices them out of the market. Second, they can return less value to their shareholders, the people who have invested in their com company. Well, they don't want to do that because then their stock prices and their shareholders bolt, so they don't do that. Third is they can pay their employees less. Well, that's the one that they usually do. And so if you have businesses paying less taxes, we're going to have lower prices on goods, we're going to have higher wages, and we're going to have better dividends, and taxes on businesses are really double taxation because money that you were taxed on is going into a business and then being taxed on the business side, and it's double taxation. It's so. almost triple, too, when it gets passed mm -hmm. on to the employee. And if you invest pay taxes triple. on what? You're not even talking about inflating money. Let's yeah, talk but, quadruple. And let's talk yeah, taxation let's, is theft. Quintuple when you invest in a company and you start buying stocks and then you cash out and pay capital gains taxes, then you die and inheritance then taxes. Centuple. That's centuple. But so, he got rid of that too. So yes. Do you hear? Do you hear about the uh, the liberals bitching about that? That oh my god, now all the rich people give give their money to their kids for free and it doesn't right. go to the government. And then like what? <laughs> Stupid. I, like what? Everyone gets to. <laughs> like right. what? Yeah, not it's just not just rich people. Rich people. <laughs> you, you're getting a tax cut too. You can plan your life out now to leave something for your kids and know yeah. that half of it won't get stolen from you. You realize wealth <laughs> is built through like generations, not just like every once in a while somebody will create like Facebook and get rich. But I mean, yeah, shit like that doesn't and, come along. Entre like the economy is built on the back of people who start companies with thirty employees. Yeah. It isn't the small Facebooks business, of the, right? Yeah. It isn't the Facebooks of the world, so yeah. because they 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 really don't even do anything. So we have if you're a, like I was saying, if you're a Trump supporter, there's a lot of really good news out there for Donald Trump to go out and promote. But what he does is he goes out and steps on his dick. Did you know? And he and he he goes out and he retweets Britain First, which is their version of the KKK. And then starts an international incident with his Twitter. And so then instead of his surrogates going out and telling the good news of Donald Trump's administration and all the good things he's doing, they have to go and defend him. And yes, the media is never going to give the guy a break. Okay, we know that. Donald Trump is never going to win with the mainstream media. We understand that. But instead of talking about tax cuts and judges, we're talking about the morality of his tweets. It's almost better though. Well, you for saw him. he doesn't. Have, he's been kicking the mainstream media out. He it, has a lot of smaller networks you, in there now. One American News is in the White House. Yeah, that's a YouTube Info channel. Wars. Basically, basically, like he's, he's letting those people in because he knows they they will. I know the One American News is basically the Russia Today of the conservative right wing. Do you like, know what I want? I just want someone to give me a statement of what happened, and then I don't need a fucking story. Right. I just need. I don't need all your. Opinions. Okay, Donald Trump <laughs> right. passed a bill. Just put that in the news. Like I don't. I'll discern whether or not I think it's good or bad, or whether or not transgender people be pissed off about it. You're so. You're so INTJ. I am. I just <laughs> oh, want to just boil it down to the bare minimum, and I'll make it. I'll make a decision on it. But I. What were we talking about before this? I had a point. Uh, oh, oh, the news. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm not even drunk. It's I like know. this is just tad. no. This is just me. Yeah. Like if I was drunk, I'd be way better. But uh, eighty percent of the co news coverage from Donald Trump since he's been elected mm -hmm. for a year has been negative. Of course, which it's I mean, it's kind of brought on itself. But and then I think it's only like fifteen fifteen percent is like negative slash positive or neutral slash positive. So it's like. He doesn't get any. There's no. You can't find any. Type in Donald Trump accomplishments first year. You can't find anything. Right. I did. There, there's nothing. The right you now. can't That's, find anything. I just do. No, literally. I, I was taking. I was. Show. I was in the bathroom earlier, and I was like, uh, or yeah. two days ago, I was like, I need to figure out. Like, surely there's got to be like a just something that shows what he's done. One accomplishments yeah. in three hundred days. But they're technically not his accomplishments. They're and, Barack Obama. And they're what they think are accomplishments. Yeah, and, and it's right. like it's yeah. Catholic news media or something. It's like, yeah, he still it's hasn't. 
its first accomplishment says military, and it says he um, delayed the beginning of the opening of military to transgenders. Yeah. <laughs> so that's an accomplishment. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's an accomplishment. <laughs> it's not an accomplishment whether you agree with it or not. Right. Like, I mean, you could argue that going into the, uh, Iraq is an accomplishment for George Bush. I mean, that's right. what he did. It's just something he did. Like He accomplished just, it. Just throw the shit out there. Let's figure. Let's figure not this positive out. Positive or negative? Yeah, I mean, just put it out just there. Just what happened? I can't stand the, the media. Give us what happened. I don't even want. <laughs> just, yeah, just tell me what he did. I don't. All right. Well, I don't feel like we came to a conclusion here. But <laughs> Donald Trump's awesome. What are you talking about? <laughs> He's got all the liberals pissed off. It's true. Just and call that, me. A that skeptic. makes me happy. So. Just call me a skeptic. I don't know. Listen. Ask me again in 2020 if I'm voting for him. I didn't this time. He's building the wall. <laughs> That's all I, gotta, I know. I gotta wait. Hey, uh, immigration is down like sixty something percent. It's true, but we're a lot. In some ways, policy wise, we're a lot better off than what he's. We he, he's actually been the king of deregulation. <laughs> yeah, to be right. honest with you, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, as a, from a libertarian perspective, yeah. he's he's for every law he's passing, he's getting rid of two or whatever. I think he's gotten rid of like 168 or something. I can't remember what the fuck it was or yeah. or positions. What I don't know. He's he, he's just not filling whole he's departments. Not, I I don't care if he gets rid of the whole department, whatever. Get rid I of agree. It. I'm with you. I mean, he put him. What's his name in front of the uh, what EPA. guy from Texas? Uh, yeah, Rick Perry. Rick, Rick Perry is like, I don't even know what this shit is. I don't believe in global yeah. warming. <laughs> like, I don't even know what it is. I'm just uh, sir, the uh, Greenland has melted into the sea. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about Greenland. <laughs> Venice, Venice, a hundred days of the year has water in the parts that it isn't supposed to have water. Fuck them. They should have moved Texas. They got <laughs> right. oil. Uh, Miami is rapidly sinking underwater. Yeah, get in Puerto Rican back Puerto Rico. Antarctica clearly is melting. Nobody lives there anyway. The biggest Who ice cares? shelf is the Queen Mary is falling into the sea. Uh, so we can mine it now. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, who cares if the ice melts and we can mine the shit out of it. And that, that's one of those things where, like... California needs water. Yeah. <laughs> they're on fire and they're bitching about global warming. Global warming is one of those things where, like, I, I just don't know a lot about climate change, but... Uh, and I, I just don't, I have never really learned a lot about it. And it never seemed like when I was in politics to be, a, a politically, it just didn't seem like a good idea to have an opinion on it. <laughs> like, uh, but <laughs> now, you know, yes, the earth overall, the entire temperature is cooling, but that doesn't mean that the parts that matter are cooling. Like, in Antarctica. Like Africa is getting cooler, so they can <laughs> right. actually grow food now. Right, and Antarctica and Greenland, <laughs> where we don't like all these big fires, these big wildfires in LA. Basically, that smoke has to go somewhere, so that goes up into Greenland. The ash settles on the north and south poles. It heats up those ice it gets shelves. Black, so it gets more it gets black. So all that starts, and then these massive mountains of ice start falling into the sea, and so now you do in a place like Venice. 100 days out of the year, you have – it's underwater where it's not supposed to be underwater. Yes, Venice is supposed to have the canals. Like, Miami is lifting the city. New York is lifting their city because of of the rising oceans. You realize the Earth used to be, like, one big continent, right? Right. Pangea, but – Yeah. Okay, so. right. What? Fine. That was 8 million years ago. So what, I'm what, not worried about it. Right. Like, I've got 60 years. What do I care? Yeah, exactly. But – it, it just is very you clear. Go on Michael Moore on us. You just you, the facts are in front of your face. Shit always changes. But no, the <laughs> facts are in front of your face. Water is in places it's not supposed to be because of natural disasters because, and things we can't control. Exactly right. All right. So now, how what is do we do raising about it? my tax going to fix this? It's not right. So you can look at we it. We need to develop technology to control the weather. Right. Absolutely. We had that harp crazy. We need to do that. We need to be able to control the weather. That will that will help solve a lot of these problems and a it lot. Sounds of these like disasters. a globalist Let's to me. Let's just uh, sit back and let him uh, explain. It's this. not like that. We haven't tried that before. Right, seeding clouds <laughs> and things. Come no, on. like Elon Musk is somebody who does it's not far fetched. So he's a foreigner. He is, and from South America, so he's got that weird accent. He's going to use a rocket to go to Mars and then use it again and again and again, <laughs> the same rocket. You're going to be so tired of the rocket. Ten years ago, you would have told me that was crazy. <laughs> it burns up yeah. when it comes back in, you know? you got to pick them up in the ocean. Now, if you make it out of diamonds. <laughs> I don't you, know. Do you play Minecraft or, or something? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I'm just speculating on what he makes his rockets no, out No, like, all right, so Elon Musk <laughs> is somebody who, all right, 
CO2, wildfires, changing uh, weather, weather patterns, all of these contribute to the ice caps melting. That which is a problem. It's Donald okay? Trump's fault. Like the Maldives are go- not going to exist in a hundred years. Like Good. it's it's happening. All right. So those are facts. Like you can't sit there and say this doesn't happen because you can watch any video on on the internet and see for yourself the giant ice cliffs falling into the sea. Like these are facts. Okay. You can go and read the the you know the listen. I love the Koch brothers, but the Koch brothers are have heavily invested in fossil fuels and they fund the heartland institute which is a great institute but also is a climate change denying organization because the cokes who are invested in fossil fuels want them to be and want them to create facts to get you to misdirect you and so how do we stop i love how do we stop the problem do you pass a worldwide carbon tax that slows well china's never going to comply with that it's like gun control okay so there is a problem. There needs to be a solution. What's the solution? Capitalism is solving the problem in Tesla. Go yep. look at Tesla. Yep. They're solving the problem. Like Vice did a great documentary on the future of energy on HBO, which you can find on YouTube. And they talk about like all these super colliders and all these like power plants that are being built and Tesla's batteries. Like that's going to solve our carbon emissions problem. It's not going to be. It's going to be miniature nukes is it, what it's going to be. That's right, is, is exactly right. It's 100% true. I know. I'm an ANCAP. I know this. And McNukes. so <laughs> if McNukes in your backyard, that's not even a joke. Like this this little nerdy kid in Las Vegas created backyard nuclear reactors that are going to power your house yeah, forever. Because batteries aren't clean. However clean you think right. a battery is, it's not clean. It right. all comes from, uh, what are they called? Conflict diet or conflict minerals, and it's right. all it's all mined. It's not. And that's my point. It's with not controlling the. Weather. There's there's no way to actually control it. I mean, if you think humans can control it, no, all we do is fuck shit up. But we find a way to fuck shit up differently. It's like when before the automobile was invented, mm-hmm. horse manure was a huge fucking problem. Like the streets in New York were just covered like and there were the literally truck truckloads of shit. Innovation and, then, and profit. Yeah, I mean it's you free time. market. That's the one. It wasn't. No one set out to solve the problem of how to get rid of horse shit. It just came along because there's a different way of transportation. It's a different way of thinking. It's yeah. It'll it'll work itself out. When I'm I have not a worried conversation with one of, with a friend that's not a libertarian, but it's yeah, a political it's... conversation. That's usually where I end up. Is they're like, well, how do you solve any problems? You don't. The government doesn't. The government doesn't solve. The government the doesn't solve any. Actually, problems. most of the. I mean, problems are from regulation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I honestly, would, if you want to look into it, I saw this. Um, that doesn't that then that does, regulations are just when the government doesn't allow the market to solve the problem. Yeah. that's what the that's what a regulation. I saw Sam. In, Sam the market in, finds a way though, eventually. Sam yeah. Antique, and you can't explain that to someone that yeah. doesn't understand libertarianism. Yeah, Sam we Ant- don't know everything. We don't know how to fix everything. But it will be fixed <laughs> mm-hmm. if there's okay. money. All right. So Antifa basically Who? shared this thing. That, you know, Jeff Bezos is worth $100 billion while his employees uh, make make $35,000 a year. And I and c- this is why capitalism it's is true. the problem. And I wanted to go, Move to hey, dum-dum, you realize none of those $35,000 jobs, the hundreds of thousands of jobs that Amazon will probably create over the course of its run as a business, the millions of jobs – are because of capitalism. Like, just because one dude has stock. Like, anytime somebody talks about Jeff Bezos being the problem, they don't understand how stocks work. <laughs> like, just because he owns the majority you of Amazon. You realize this is the dickhead who created the company you work for? Like, right. You're, he's the reason you have a job? Right. So, I was listening. Even though they are going to get outsourced by robots. I mean, let's be honest. Vox, Vox did a podcast on all the uh, carve-outs in the tax bill. And all the gimmies that, and they were just bemoaning the tax bill because it's ending a lot of goodies, you know. And it's they, all McGibbs. They talked about like the teachers' credit is being ended. So if you buy school supplies, teachers would get a credit for that. Well, I buy supplies for my businesses and my employer all the time, and I don't. I get maybe I get reimbursed, but like the the notebooks that I use at work, I don't get tax credits for that. So why should a teacher? Like there's the it, problem is that they have to buy that shit in the first place. Like, come on. Right. Like, well, it, it's it's because of irresponsible <laughs> parents. But 
Exactly. Uh, you they, want to get into parenting? The teacher I unions. Forty-five minutes on that. The teachers unions were just trying to give a carve out for their people, and some Democrats were Absolutely. trying to curry favor with them. So you have all these gimmies in the tax code, and that the Republicans are ending and giving you a higher standard deduction. And that's what, like, they didn't mention is, yeah, that tax credit may end for teachers, but they're going to get twice the amount of the standard deduction. So you're actually going to, you know, like, I will get 12000 instead of 6000 as a standard deduction. Married couples will get twenty four instead of 12 So it's going to even itself out for middle class folks like us. But if you listen to the liberal media, this is an Armageddon when it's just not. It's just not the case. So you have... Um, but Vox I've was never basically... seen so many people upset that they would be getting more money back. It's or actually really money that they made keeping. I mean, nobody actually talks about it like that. You were actually getting get to keep more of the money that you made. Yeah. You're not getting it back. It's not the government giving you the fucking money, you tard. You've already paid this money to the government, and you're lending it to them. Right. At zero interest, and they give it back to you at the end of the year. Yeah. Like, what the hell? So... You know how much more less it's worth at the end of the year? It's less hey, more than what I put in. Let's tax your Bitcoin currency when it gains value. But I don't own any Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, well, that's your fault. So you, <laughs> wink, you, wink. Vox was basically <laughs> saying, They're Vox trying was to make like, that illegal. I know they are. Over the last twenty years, the tax code has really been slanted towards. Vox, that's your problem. That's well, that's <laughs> but. You have to listen to everything. And so they're talking. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> there are some things you can just say, uh, nope. <laughs> when, when someone shares a Keith Olbermann video on my nope. Facebook, I'm like, nope. I turn on the weeds. <laughs> when I want to get pissed off and get ready for the gym and get my tea up, I turn <laughs> you on. put on Soy Boys. I, I, put on the, I put on the weeds by Vox. And it's just like all these emasculated little liberal men sitting there talking about, you know, they all kind of talk like this very androgynously and they have all these horrible dad jokes so then they all go <laughs> it's, so hilarious. it's hilarious uh so anyways the republicans uh the tax code this this guy what <laughs> this guy literally talks like this and i think it's i don't think it's ezra klein but i think it's uh, oh, uh matt tabai who's a cancer he's like <laughs> Uh, well, the tax code for the last 20 years has really been bent uh, towards the white male middle class who is a small business owner who uh, has gotten a lot, and the workers have really been hurt. They're just giving a lot of tax breaks to employers. Well, yeah, and he's like... But the people actually work. Right. Like, and What and, the fuck is that? Okay, you communist. Uh, I'm fighting for the labor. Where the fuck do you think the labor comes from? They get a job because of management. They get a job because... My dad, a small business owner, is out there creating new business to hire employees and expanding his business. And at one point, oh, hired over 100 people. I'm trying to grow We Are Libertarians into a business so I can hire people to help inform the, the population about libertarian principles. Mitt, Mitt, <laughs> she <laughs> said mute. <laughs> Mitten's literally She's a socialist. Mitten's, She's literally, like, Shut it up. Mitten's literally ran up and tried to hit my yeah. mute switch. It was so funny. She's a communist. Oh, my yeah. God. I started talking about the proletariat and the. Before that, she was just sleeping over there. She yeah. was, and then when I started talking about how management is good, she ran over and tried to mute me. She <laughs> said, "I'm sick of this red scare going on in this room." Typical fucking SJW cash Russian man. Propaganda. <laughs> trying to keep you quiet. So yeah, the the tax code should be bent towards business owners because they're the ones who give us jobs and give us more economic opportunity. No, it, it shouldn't even be bent towards. It should just be if you're going to tax somebody, flat. just tax them. Right. Be yes. be flat with it or. Get rid of the tax. I mean, and number, just figure the tax system's. Now I've got fucked. a tax plan. It starts with seven, seven, seven. 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 <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Listen, y'all. No, no, no. Sounds even better. <laughs> All right, guys. God damn. Who was that? Uh, Herman Cain. Herman Cain yeah. ended because of a sex scandal. Yeah. Uh, God forbid. I saw. On what do you do? Have sex with his wife? I saw Laura. Uh, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Laura Ingram, I think he had an affair, and then it yeah. started his marriage. But Who then, cares? then I saw uh, Newt, Newt on Laura Ingram talking about sex scandals, and he was kind of sticking up for Al Franken. I'm like, yeah, you would, because that's why you got dethroned as the leader of the house because of sex scandals. So, all right, guys, we need to start wrapping up. Final thoughts for this episode, Chris Galt. Uh, no real final thoughts. Just don't, just don't read everything like Spangle says. <laughs> 
<laughs> don't look at everything. That's don't what I, watch that box. That's don't what, go watch that. Listen, that's what I'm here to do. You hire me. You, you're uh, just watch. If you do watch it, watch it or read it with an open mind right. and kind of like have your baseline. I read a headline the other day. I was like, "Oh shit!" I was like, "This is juicy." And then I was like, "Wait a minute." This is Join me and be a skeptic. Yeah. Skeptic of everything. You have to be a skeptic these days. I I get labeled conspiracy, but it's skepticism. Yep. And anything else? Uh, thanks for having me on. See you All guys right. soon. A couple weeks. Tad? Oh, I, 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 Where the you, fuck is my Tad Talks? About that. I sold my microphone for heroin. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I didn't. <laughs> I couldn't get enough heroin for that. No, uh, you got beer no, I've, skid. I've been busy and I've been sick. I don't know. I've been sick for like the last two weeks. Like, I don't know. I don't know why I'm making excuses for not doing it. I just haven't. I Honestly, I've had a lot of content, and I haven't really wanted to do it. I know the people have been wanting it. Mm-hmm. I've kind of just been, uh, I need, I, I forgot how much I love doing this, talking shit into microphones. Yeah. You got uh, a lot to say. I know. Yeah. I do have a lot to say. And I've got, Are you it's on important. Discord? I don't know. No. I, I, what? I they talk about I you don't on there tweet. a lot. I know. I know. I'm. See, they I were all wondering about your next podcast, and I was like, well, we're going to be on tonight. Nobody knows. They were all asking about it. Nobody you. knows. I get messages all the time. Hey, when are you going to do another podcast? I was like, I don't know. I've got, I don't know. I've got. Well, you got to at least get on Discord. We'll make you a channel. Yeah, so make you me can a tad talk in the channel. Make and me a channel. Just come talk to you. I just get burnt out super quick on shit. I don't know why that is. But I, I don't know. I'm weird. Everybody well, fucking knows that if you listen to this. Huh? <laughs> then you can leave. Yeah, I'll do it for like a week. <laughs> I got a million things going on in my mind, but I, I think we, this was a good podcast. I know we didn't really get into a whole lot of what Trump's done in the past year. It's just kind of we kind of did a what's in the aura podcast. Yeah, we talked about a lot of shit. It's it's an old school. It's a it was yeah. It, it did feel pretty like the old we, school type. We've gone we well. This is mid school, so there's old school, which is like I didn't ho- like middle school. I got four school four subjects in an hour. And then there's mid school, which is three hours on a single subject, <laughs> meandering through uh, lots of ADD. And then there's new school, which is just go with the flow. A nice blend of the two, but this is yeah, very mid school. I like it. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I, I I don't mind Trump. I think he's doing what he said he was going to do. If you voted for him, I think you're probably happy, and I think you're probably actually more bought in because of what his haters are doing like trying to get it trying to find some collusion or bull, mm-hmm. whatever that's a whole other fucking episode we can do but tell uh I, creighton to bring some boxing gloves yeah <laughs> yeah i can't wait i want to be ringside for the uh <laughs> for the uh reenactment or whatever whatever happened but no i i had a good time tonight and i i love doing this and uh i don't want to thank anybody i think i'm sticking up for child molesters but uh, That's where I thought you were at first when I said what? No, I wasn't gonna go full. <laughs> I thought you were going full I, I, there. I, I, I wasn't was like, going full man. like uh, full this is gonna be interesting show. libertarian. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> no, no, no. Back, backwoods Vermont, whatever they believe up there. But the government can't tell me who and who I can't. Fuck. Here's no, the thing about no. Tad: is Tad's politics are like your grandpa's politics. So like Tad, if you're white, I'm voting for you. Right? No, <laughs> no, not racist, but like. <laughs> Tad is one of those guys who is like, you know, he hangs out at the sports bar on the weeknights because he doesn't have a wife, so he doesn't, you know, I'll just go. Because I might, I choose not to. I'm not. Drink a few beers. He's not gay. Queer or anything. (laughs) Is that what you're trying to say? I tried it a couple times. (laughs) And so you basically are like, you just don't care about much. You just, uh, all those people over there need to do this. He's just old school politics. I don't think anybody should be able to do any like just stay the fuck out of my life. So, I, I, I don't know. I don't know why people get so upset. About so it. yeah, he he's he's just he's he's out there screaming out uh, screaming out into the wilderness, hoping somebody he reminds me of Bad Narc. It, yeah, well. I don't know what that is, but it's probably good. <laughs> I got a bad case oh, of the bad narc once. It was oh, uh, 
Uh, no. Narcan, like the shit they. Shoot no, at. Michael Bad Narc is a con- uh, he teaches a class in the U.S. Constitution. Really interesting guy. I ran for president in the LP. Look up Michael Bad Narc if you want to learn more about the Constitution from a libertarian perspective. I've been to his class. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, my uh, my final thoughts. Uh, you pay me uh, through Patreon to read all the stuff, so you don't have to. I tell you what you need to know and what you need to care about and what's a big deal or not. And uh, that's what we do here. You give me four or five hours a week, and I will tell you what you should care about. Uh, and I will uh, tell you all the reasons that everybody else cares about it, and then you can make up your own mind. So that's really what I'm trying to do. And uh, it takes a lot of time. I don't, I don't really do much but read news, and I love it. And I'm having a great time doing this over the last three or four months. Uh, the, the people are responding to it well. I appreciate that. I appreciate that you guys are enjoying the show in this uh, new age. Uh, and we're having a lot of fun. Like the community that has kind of sprang up around the Discord and in the two Facebook groups, uh, really fun, really fun. And the best part about being a Patreon subscriber, yes, you get the bonus content. Yes, you get the extra stuff. But you also get access to a Facebook group that's much smaller, much more intimate, and it's it's fun. Like, it's just more fun to interact with more people, and so that's the great thing about being a Patreon subscriber, especially at 10 bucks and up, you get access to that Facebook group, and you get more friends. And who couldn't mm. use more friends? That's cheap. Yeah. Quit, ten... quit paying for Pornhub Premium and give Spangler exactly. your 10 bucks a month. Uh, so, yes, that's that's what we're doing here. We're trying to make you sound smarter when you're talking with your friends, give you the skinny on information, and uh, giving it to you through a libertarian lens so you know that it's not full of dogma, that it's with clear eyes, and uh, hopefully you can trust it. And if not, listen, don't trust me. Just go, you know, I've I've been in politics and media for 15 years, okay? I've worked at every level He's of— old media and politics that you can here in Indiana. <laughs> and I've, I, I'm cynical for a reason. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I can, I can tell what's bullshit and what's not. So uh, if I'm really worked up over something, there's probably a reason. Uh, part of the reason, like, the, the, the Roy Moore stuff bothers me so much is there's a city councilor here in town named Jeff Miller. J-E-F-F. It's Miller time. Jeff Miller has been arrested by the IMPD for child molestation charges. And the, listen, it's so weird to watch Republicans be very pro-police until they arrest a Republican for child molestation, and then a certain segment of them go, He's a good well, boy. The, the police are wrong. Mm, you have the black sticker with the blue line through it. Do you trust the police? Like, so they don't, the, the IMPD police department has the best child crimes investigative unit in the state. Like, they're not going to just charge a city councilor for no reason. And it wasn't and like they, he was speeding. I mean, right. we're talking about, about touching 10 year old girls. Multiple. Times. Multiple girls. And the guy is not stepping down from his seat. He's saying it's all false. He's pled, pled not guilty, which is his right. He's getting his day in court. Uh, he's going to go through the trial, but at the expense of his constituents. He's been stripped of his committee assignments. He's a pariah in the community. He cannot go out to community meetings without this being the topic. He's not serving his constituents. He's now serving himself as a way to stay in this, you know, and uh, if he truly believes he's innocent, he should plead not guilty. But if he's guilty and he knows it, Clap your hands. Uh, forcing 10-year-old... But if he's not, you can't expect him to step down. Forcing 10-year-old girls... Would, wouldn't if, if you didn't do it and you were being accused I would, of it, ab- you would step if down? If I were in his shoot, I would absolutely step down. I think after I got arrested, I would definitely step down. I would down. if... I think that's where you a, draw Spangle, the line. Spangle would, get, would step down and then win in court. Absolutely. So what? then he'd win what? You... He wouldn't be a senator anymore. Where's your power? Huh? You lost it all. Yeah. Well, you can run again after you're vindicated. I, I wouldn't if if my life would be over. His life is over. That's the problem. Is he made choices that led to the best police department in the state convinced that multiple girls accused him of this. Like this if you read the documents, I have the documents. It's very it clear what happened. But he feels that if he just protests this loud enough, then people will go, Well, he must not be guilty. And that's what Trump and Roy Moore have taught 
Republicans, but politics at large. Like, well, if you're not guilty, just even if you are guilty, just scream it from the it doesn't even matter if it's child molestation. Like there's no there's literally no crime anymore that is untouchable. Like the Republicans a year ago were talking about Pizzagate and how that's the most horrible thing you could possibly think of. And we've got city councilors out here accused of it with documented evidence that we we would have craved in the Pizzagate case. And there's a certain pop- portion of the local GOP that is supporting him. Like, where are their principles? That's exactly what I want to know. Like, we can't have pineapple it, 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 on pizza. What 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 is the end game here? That's really the question that I don't understand that that a lot of Republicans, especially, should be asking. And I'm picking on Republicans because I stood next to all these Tea Party Republicans. I was in founding meetings of the Indiana Tea Party. I was at ground zero of the Tea Party in 2009, 2010. I, I, was, I knew every single one of these people. I went to all their rallies. I got to know them. I went to every Tea Party group in the state in 2010, 2011. Like, and I just saw people who preached morals and values and made fun of Clinton, and we're going to hold ourselves to a higher standard, and that's why we need to get people out of the Senate and – like even honorable men like Dick Luger, who are politically wrong but are not bad guys, are are those guys need to go in favor of like Richard Mordock was actually a good dude. Like I can't I can't I can't bag on Mordock because he wasn't a joke. Like he was actually a very intelligent man who made the slip of a tongue that was roasted at the at the hands of the press and the local Democrats. Yeah. But you, you and. I just see those same exact people on Facebook who are in the Tea Party preaching morality, sticking up for Roy Moore. And I just go, to what end? Like, is is that the hill you're going to die on? Like, because if that's the hill you're going to die on, supporting child molesters in the city, county council, and the Senate, like, just die. <laughs> like, I, I just I just don't get it. Like, the cognitive dissonance. It's one thing if you just say, like, there's no intellectual honesty. I, so they have to just make up facts to say he couldn't have done this. This is a fa- forgery. Here's how we think this is a forgery. Like, no, honey, it's true. Like, if you just want to win an election, then just say that. At least be intellectually honest if you're going to be a disgrace to your country. Like, it, it's so I, I just look at it and I go, the Indianapolis City County Council, uh, member that is a Republican that is refusing to step down is the end. So it's not like Roy Moore where there's 40 years between it and it's like there's actual documented evidence and he's been arrested for it. There's a good case. After Weinstein, uh, one of the girls said, oh, that's what... I don't even have a problem with what Weinstein did, to be honest with you. If he's trading jacking off into a potted plant and it's consensual... It's not cons- for, it's not for, consensual because he's basically the one wasn't that he was caught on camera, but he's I mean, like so that's kind of different. Kidnapping but. women and making them it's like Matt Lauer locking the door. You're locked in an office. It's not kind of different well, if you're caught on camera. It's, well, do you, it is hey, do you want do you want to be in Kill Bill or didn't you not? You're gonna suck this right. Dick, all right, but come th- on. But this that's to me, free like, market. He saw Weinstein and he just goes, the the girl goes, that's what that man did to me. And that's when it, they started investigating and found a pattern. A pattern matters. Al Franken had a pattern. So that means it's probably true. Like if it was the one woman with the picture, well, okay, she could have an axe to grind. But when it's seven, that's a pattern. That's truth. Okay? The, you know, the, the Bible says there has to be two witnesses. That's the foundation of American law. Witnesses speaking out saying this happened is evidence. Words coming out of mouths are evidence, okay? Like, when did, when did the people that were supposed to stand up for the rule of law, libertarians and con- conservatives, give up the very foundational principle of words actually have meaning? And to what end? To the point that Jeff Miller thinks he can stay on the council when there's a very credible case against him for child molestation. That is the end result of this. And if you're one of these people who supports Roy Moore, I think you really have to step back. Go and read the articles from the Washington Post because at least four or five people that I talk to online 
I forced them. I said, we're no longer talking about this until you read the Washington Post article. They went read, went and read the article, came back and said, I'm completely wrong. You're right. I'm sorry. Like, it's clear to me when people argue about Roy Moore at this point that they didn't just read the evidence. They didn't go and use their critical brain. They're just reacting. And reactionary politics is very dangerous in a society. Anti-intellectualism, the rule of man, not caring about the rule of law, these are very dangerous things in a society. And we're certainly not at a point where we are 1933 and Hitler's rising and all that. But one good economic we can only hope. One good economic crisis with these bad thinking, these thinking errors in place, and we are Germany in 1933. So we have to be good stewards of how we think, what we publish on social media, and how we have political discourse with our friends, family, and online, because it really does matter. It really matters what you personally are putting out in the world. And, uh, you know, I just think that libertarians, I see libertarians betraying our basic principles for political expediency to win arguments on Facebook, and it just doesn't, it's just not good. Polls. That's different. <laughs> that's okay, collusion. That's different. <laughs> that was collusion with Bittners. You have to understand. That was horrible. You I cheated. Don't, I don't like to lose. You lie. You lie bigly. I don't play board games with my four-year-old niece because I will flip the board and call her names. Yeah, you'll steal all of her properties. The second I sit down to play a board game with somebody, I start thinking about how to cheat because <laughs> I love to win. Are you stealing <laughs> money out of the bank? Yeah, mon Monopoly I'm bank. The bank. Absolutely. Wow, every time I turn it around. So to have in, to, know. To, to be a man of integrity, I do not play games. Oh, you just don't play them. I just don't play them because the <laughs> temptation to win at any cost is too great for me. Politics is the ultimate game, though. It's exactly right. That's right. So, uh, actually, hunting man the is the ultimate life. game. But <laughs> yes, right the underneath Hunger Games. That. The Hunger Games. No, yeah. Hunting All right. Man. Thank you for joining us here in this episode of We Are Libertarians. You're welcome. Uh, I want to thank our Patreon one hundred dollar <laughs> reward uh, subscribers, Brandon Luke. Thanks so much for joining, buddy. Uh, Christy Avery, Craig D Craig DeCosta, Jason Doolittle. You guys are awesome. Our twenty five dollar subscribers. I want to thank Rick Irvine and Nick Economopoulos, who literally joined from 10 to 25 during this episode. Uh, I want to thank you guys. I thank really guys. appreciate that. Uh, Brantley Spicer, Rick Irvine, Nick Economopoulos, Chad Oakage, Joey Tarner, Pete Jones, Carly Ernst, Brandon Kester, Heidi Aldridge, Christian Emmons, Dan Dunbar, Doug Stream, Chris Brokoff, and uh, Todd Singer. You guys are awesome. Thank you to everybody who donates on Patreon. Uh, you, you 100 people pay the bills for the other 6,900 freeloaders. If just every single one of you listeners, you socialists, $1, it comes out on the first of the month. It'll be like $1.80 now. Will it? Because of the new taxes, remember? Uh, the, 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 the fees. fees. The, 250 the, Just subscribe 250 Listen, five bucks. You get, you get cool content. Seven. $5. 6,900 of you, if you just gave $5, not only could I devote all of my time trying to figure out the bullshit in the news for you, I could hire people to do it, and we could do some really cool stuff. So, and uh, you get Tad Talk back up and running, too. Exactly. So, set a goal. If they get to a yeah, goal, you open you it go. back up and you do a show. Yeah. It's just one show. What's your goal? Exactly. Spangle goal. how much you need. I need. I don't need any money. I'm rich. Exactly. He's big in Turkey right now. <laughs> So I just, With I just, no huge. <laughs> so if you're one of those 6,900 people that don't give via Patreon, love that you listen. We appreciate it, especially if you're a new person, just testing it out for the first time. Love for you to contact us at, at the, the Facebook group, the Discord, editor at wearelibertarians.com. Uh, everything's at wearelibertarians.com. You can go there. You can listen to Wall Radio. You can get all the other podcasts. You can see my writings. You can see links, all kinds of cool stuff there. Uh, but that Patreon, that's how we pay for all this stuff. And so if you're one of those 6,900 people, man, it'd be awesome if you could, uh, just kick in a buck a month, kick in five bucks a month. That really helps us out. If you want to give a one-time contribution, there's a PayPal link on there. We have equipment that we always need donated. There's an Amazon wish list. So in this time of giving, I know everybody's budgets are strapped because of Christmas. So maybe, uh, after you get your Christmas, uh, or if you made a bunch of money on Bitcoin, 
I'm going to get a Bitcoin wallet set up, too, finally, because that like, it's stupid not to. Now that I understand so Bitcoin. So do you understand how the market works now? You I, said earlier that it's a commodity now and not a currency. It, but you're setting it up, and the market's growing. It, that the currency's w- coming. It's going to be a currency. It again. is currently commoditized. Sure, no. it Bit, could it could go back to a currency. Bitcoin Absolutely. is a reserve uh, online coin. It's a reserve currency I, coined for all the other altcoins. Um, I'm I got on Coinbase, <laughs> so I didn't know that on Coinbase. Really? I don't know. On <laughs> Coinbase, if you do a a bank transfer on your Coinbase, it takes five to seven days to process. Whereas a debit card, it's immediate. Which I wish I had done that. So I did bank transfers, and so I'm waiting on three transfers. But I put about 150 into Bitcoin. The first and was it takes three days to go in. Five at least oh, for a bank transfer. You're missing out be, on all the. I, no. you're losing out on gains. You're missing out on all this. Mo- We're going to the moon to over here. No, no, no. So okay, I put 20 in at 900 or 9,000. I my uh, I, I doubled my money basically today. Like I looked at it and it was double what it was. So it was like 40, 45. And uh, then I put 25 in at 11, and that hasn't processed, but the buy order's for 11, so it's going to buy at 11. Oh, so no matter what. It doesn't prices. matter, right. Oh, okay. And then I put in 100. No, yeah, I put in 100 last night when it was like 13, 13. 14. So could you cancel it if it goes down? I don't think so. I think no. I'm stuck. That's that's the bad part. So I'm sitting here <laughs> You're going. You're a real Gordon Gecko. You know? I am. I am. <laughs> I'm just sitting here freaking out like, please don't crash. You got $100 in there? Absolutely. Wow. You better wait till the Korean. You realize that's 24 hours a day, and the Koreans, they're going. They're if it's selling big time right now. I just got an alert. Dude, if I put it in at 12, and it, and I and it holds, and it keeps building, and it's 25 by the time that process is in Coinbase, I'm just going to sell it that day. I'm like, I double my money, I'm out. You realize McAfee had Bitcoin, this is twice as fast as what he had it projected going. I know. And he said it was what, like I know. a billion dollar? That's why I'm praying it doesn't crash in the next five days. But just, You just got to watch the market cap and figure out what people are doing. If, if I lose, at, I mean, at, at this point. It's gambling, uh, man. It's right. gambling. You just like, got to go ride the wave, man. I will have I will have $100 in my Bitcoin wallet. If it crashes, I can immediately cash out. So <laughs> That's what you think. Right. Do you look at it every day? Absolutely. Don't you do won't that. make any money. Yeah. Yep. No, I don't touch You're it. You're going to get scared. I leave it alone. Because it's going to go down 20%. Are you going to pull out? I always pull absolutely out. at twenty when it loses twenty percent. I, I I will have a process because then it's going to go back up fifty. If 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 and it, you'll miss out on that jump, you no, can't day trade Bitcoin. No, Bitcoin I'm not day like trading. Gold. Not day trading. You just need to sit on it and like, not even look at it. Anymore. Like if if after after a point of twelve hours, it's gone from like twenty to ten. I'm gonna sell. No, fuck no. that. Uh, What's no. the point at that point? Yeah, why are you doing it? Because for then, ten dollars. That's I mean, what you're doing it for. All right, here's what I'll do. Ten dollars. Here's what I will do. <laughs> I will take Let out. Let me manage your funds. No, no, no. I'm rich. Uh, uh-uh. no. <laughs> That's the worst idea. I've what ever I will do. <laughs> you see that Lambo on twenty four? I would outside? give my money to James Neese to manage before you. James is low key rich. I made a hundred million. You drove up here. Altcoin. You drove up here in a 1997 to- to- Ford Toyota. It was a '94, and it's an SHO CLI edition. You know how many of those I made? Twenty five. An S H O C L C L I Taurus. One out of twenty five. Right. One out of twenty five. Investing They're cars. Numbered and signed it's on the very bottom. hard to find. Like a matchbox car. Right? Yeah. Carol Shelby signed the uh he signed the glove box. No, I think what I will do is I will take out my original investment. So at least at that point I break even. If I lose that now money, you're playing with cares? house money. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's, That's what all goal. losers say. You know how Donald Trump got rich? How? Going bankrupt. Going bankrupt. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> all right. Thanks. Thanks for joining us here on this episode of We Are Libertarians. You're all beautiful people. We will see you next Tuesday. And until then, please. Except be for you, good. Jeff Vibbert, you're ugly. Good to each other. Have a good night. Uh, <coughs>